Who are we all? Hello, the Dark Canuck, C Slick, Flying Ice Witch, Lisa, and Vix. Palm Dad. If he does SCP again, I'm gonna cry. That's next week, apparently. We'll see. Remember, I only do the theory streams if the theory meter fills. Where are we at right now? We are at... 75 for theory, 70 for drama. And remember, if you donate $100 in one super chat, you just get... Carte Blanche, you get to pick whatever the next segment is. <clears throat> you have that devil may care look about you? Uh, that's because I desperately need to go to the washroom. But I'm a man, so I'll hold it in. Someone gifted me a sub yesterday, whoever gifted that thank you. That's probably, um, Rick has been super generous with the subs lately. My subs are cheap, by the way. It doesn't contribute to the theory meters, but if you want to donate and support the channel, and make a bunch of people with green names, good way to do it. Cleaning because why not? Cleaning, cleaning is a good thing to do. <clears throat> You've been really enjoying the SCP segments? Depending on the one, some of them, uh, the last, um, the one before the last one wasn't great, but that's because I didn't understand, like, the difference between the different SCP type of stories. That was one that's not really amenable to, like, good theorizing or reading about. The, uh, The Plague Doctor, 49, was really good. The Infinite Ikea was really good. Um, Church of the Broken God, wasn't it? Alan B., thank you for the five gifted memberships. So much appreciated. I need to clean up and caught up with our deadlines, though. Look, a little bit of mess is normal if you're a professional, or an artist, or a creator of some kind, okay? So, it's, uh, it's difficult to balance any type of intellectual work that requires, like, spontaneity, and, uh, rigid organization routines. Which drives me crazy, because I need things to be clean, otherwise I go insane. BC74SJ, thank you for the one gifted membership. All right, so we got a we got a couple things in the docket tonight. By the way, are people um are people getting notifications uh for the channel? I've noticed um I've noticed I've had uh, fewer responses um to community notes and to channel uploads recently by regulars. My um, analytics are showing that as well. I am curious if that's um. If that's a YouTube side thing, or if that's just uh, my content game hasn't been a good thing. Which, I mean, following the Doomer thing makes sense. C Slick, thank you for the five gifted memberships. You've been getting them? Okay. You're notified for videos, but not streams. That's interesting. That's interesting. Huh. I'll have to look into that. Maybe one of those things was just nothing to do, which is, you know, fair. All right. So before we jump into the Dr. K versus Dr. Mike, uh, debate. We've got two short things to go through. For me, it's the opposite. Yeah, that's weird. Half of you seem to get notified for videos, but not streams. The other half for streams, but not videos. It's very odd. Very odd. Yeah, but if you, uh, if you want regular stream announcements, you want to be able to interface with the community, 
Um, I am opening up the server once again. So let me uh, update the link. And you can join. Oh, come on. Oh, this... YouTube Studio is just so awful. You can join the cathedral. Links in the description. There's also a link to the Patreon as well. Which gives you mugs and other things. Sunday, I liked your recent video about the management of savagery. As an Arab, I can understand why you found it hard, but my community believe everything in the Emmy is written by the major powers. I mean, they're not wrong. Um, <laughs> they're really not. It's just the, um, it's the particular schematic that's um, on display in, uh, in the management of, or the administration of savagery that's naive. Um, not the most naive thing in the world, by the way, but naive. Like, it's, it's operating on a sub Mearsheimer level. Um, but also its function is primarily propagandistic. Paul Fletcher, uh, a year of our Ford member for 15 months. Thank you so much. I'm reading a superb book by uh, John, Jean Starobinsky about Rousseau called Transparency and Obstruction. I highly recommend it. Let me take a look at that. Transparency and Obstruction. We're going to be using Rousseau for the uh, one of the sections of the near mega video, which, by the way, I'm getting some. We're getting into weird places with um. Ooh, it's an expensive book. I'm going to uh, I'm going to get a digital copy of that, but that is that looks very interesting. Have you read um? What's his name? Shoot, um, he was a student of uh, Hannah Arendt's. Uh, the uh, Stephen Wolin, The Politics of Vision. Give that a look. You might find that interesting. After the last What If All This Video, I can't imagine how crazy the incel one will be. Apparently that was taken down. Apparently the incel, uh, the incel revolution had copyright material in it. So, hopefully that'll show up again soon. But, uh, if we, uh, if What If All This wins and the theory meter fills, it's only got $70 left, then, um, then we'll either we'll either postpone it and do a filler, or uh, we'll just do something else. How many books do you read a month? It depends. It really depends. Um, depends what you define as a book, and it depends on the kind of book. So, like, I'm gonna read... Like, I'm reading A Midsummer Night's Dream. I'm gonna finish this, like, tomorrow. Um, that's not a book. That's a play. That's, that's short. If we're talking about, like, uh, Henry Bergson's Matter and Memory... Maybe in a month, because I'm reading. I'm reading more than one thing at any given time, so it's not. It's not important to be a completionist about books. It's important to just keep on reading, so you keep on learning. Um, book completed books are like a thing that, like, oh, nice, I've gone through the whole thing. Ooh. But there's no accomplishment in getting from cover to cover. What's important is that you're learning from it. So it's better to go slow and finish no volumes, but to understand what you're reading or as well as you can. Or even just to get like new ways of thinking from it. That's a benefit. Just reading books cover to cover is, is not a not an achievement. Um, a lot of people treat them that way, and as a result, they skim and they miss a lot of important stuff. Because their goal is to finish the book. Books aren't video games. There's no trophies for completing books, right? Sunday pulls up a 300 page book, calls it a short book. I mean, uh, and by the way, if you're interested in Shakespeare, and Shakespeare is politically fascinating, by the way, um, and philosophically fascinating, he was, if I may say so, the, uh, the Yoko Taro of his time. Um, get the Arden series of uh, Shakespeare, because their um, they're notes, their appendices, and, and their introductions are, are extremely critical and scholarly, and just so, so good. So good. The best stuff I've, I've, I've seen... I mean, it's just, it's his peak. There's a reason why it's a standard for academic use. Sometimes Oxford, but I've had a much better experience of the Arden. Like just to give us a sense of this, this is the um, this is the text here in the middle of a Midsummer Night's Dream. The rest is just notes. So. Three hundred is fairly short, but it's a matter of density too. Three hundred pages of Hegel, for example. 
is a bigger time investment than 300 pages of... I don't know. 300 pages of... Fuck, Rousseau. 300 pages of Rousseau is much less of a time investment. Easier. I read real theory like BL? What's BL? I just found an ardent copy of Anthony and Cleopatra in my sister's old books. Nice. Why do we have, like, violent battle music going on in the background? We're talking right now. We need chill music. That book looks nice. Uh, it is. I like this edition, but they always tend to come in beat up. They're actually very well made, so if you look at the, uh, the spines on these... Um, they are actually sewn bindings. Yeah, that can even focus enough for you. Like, they're, they'll are they hold up. They're very good. Um, actually, is this one a sewn binding? They might have changed it recently. A lot of companies have, like, cheaped out lately. No, looks like it is. Yeah, it is. It's just the glue's obscuring the signatures. So what you want to look for when you're looking for book longevity, it's not whether it's a paperback or a hardcover. You want to look... Here's my Romeo and Juliet. want to look at the spine. Okay, maybe you can see here. Look. Let's see, can we focus? Focus, 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 focus. Uh, uh. Okay, you can't really see here, but what you want to look for is that the pages end in a straight line against the glue. That's not good. I mean, it can last very well, depending on, like, the, the, the pliability of the paper and whatnot, and things like that. Like, there's a whole bunch of things that go into it, but if it has loops, like, even, regular loops... Obviously, what that means is that pages are folding around each other, so they're not all making contact with the glue. So how are they held together? They're actually sewn. They're sewn together. So that's something that's going to actually hold up, even if the spline, even if the spine, even if the spine cracks, like the glue splits, that thing will hold together. It'll just look ugly. Two hundred and four P can't pick up the fine embroidery. Yeah, well, look, look. This is a theory channel, okay? This is not a. It's not a production values channel. You look very energetic and better, actually, Sunday. Glad to see that. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of my uh, stress and health under control recently. Not perfect, not all the way there, but I'm doing a lot better. It's been a, it's been a drastic shift. This last year has been rough, guys. I've been like I've I've kind of I've, I've been kind of stoic about it, but dear God, like I've I've been through some stuff over the past few months. I'm doing much better now. Graver is the bomb. Graver's great. I haven't read Debt, but I've read uh, The Dawn of Everything, and The Dawn of Everything's good. Rixai, thank you for the ten gifted memberships. It's very generous. Has Naomi Chance been given a membership yet? She's been waiting. She's been waiting a longo time. Sunday, are there particular publishers of books you would recommend over others, or is it hit and miss with each individual one? I mean, it, al it always is with each individual one, but generally, if you're looking for academic stuff, um, anything, like, philosophical or, 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 like, political theory or whatever, uh, I, I always recommend, with few exceptions, I always recommend um, Cambridge, just for its uh, its notes and its, its um, introductions and whatnot. They get the highest quality scholars. Not all the time, though, but most of the time. So, like, an exception would be um, I strongly recommend over um, Skinner's edition of The Prince by Machiavelli. That's published by uh, Cambridge. I would actually recommend the... Um... Oh. Out of my way, pocket watch. I actually recommend the... Um, the Bondanella translation that's published by Oxford. It's like this. It's just, it's, it's, it's just better quality. It's a better quality translation, and I find the commentaries better. Shorter, mind you. You are getting less, but you're getting, in my opinion, by layman's opinion, to be clear, um, better, better quality of commentary. Just because Bondanelli is just better with that particular topic. And for readability. Whoa. Let's move up a little bit here. Okay. So... Sometimes Dover editions are better than Cambridge. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes Dover just has things that Cambridge doesn't. Like, for example, um, if you want, like, a like a, a paperback, like a hardcover, uh, a solid copy of, like, Bergson, for instance, you can get it in Cambridge. Or you can get it in uh, Dover, rather. But you can't really get it in, um, you can't get it in Cambridge. 
Um, get a book binder's press to learn how to bind your own books. I would love to do that, but that's expensive and time consuming. And look how many I've got. It'd take forever. I have a first edition of Day of the Triffids. It's my prized possession. I haven't read Day of the Triffids yet, but I have it on my shelf. I have to go through that at some point. Alright, we got a hundred concurrent viewers. I think we're ready to begin. We're competing with Demon Mama for views, so that explains a lot. We're going to, uh... We're going to look at a couple things quick. Fun things. And then we're going to get into the... Main event. Alright. Oh, Dan looking rugged over here. Um, da, 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 da. All right. So this apparently, apparently Destiny says something very funny in this conversation. So we're going to, we're going to watch that for a couple seconds. Play the voicemails. Oh boy. He put a lot of effort into this. We should do this. Take this seriously. Yeah, let's go. I'm, I've taken all of this seriously. I am too. Okay. Like my hat. A hat. You see the teeth? Yeah. That's, that's, a, for that's a gorgeous hat. Killed. That's, that's a gorgeous hat. Dan, you can do better. Wild. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, this is a good one. All right. You guys ready? I'm ready. Play it for us. Lycan. Cooks. Hey, Steven, Dan, and Lycan. My name's Eric. I'm 29. Married with two kids. Body count of six. Only a high school diploma. I'm living in West Tennessee. They just passed a bill here in the Senate that would allow teachers to carry guns. Do you guys have any stories of times that your class broke a teacher down into tears to a point where they might have snapped? Thanks for listening. Wait, firstly, Tennessee has a state Senate? Every state has a state Senate. Oh, they don't, but I know what you mean. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh, God. Let's do that one more time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. ...into tears to a point where they might have snapped. Thanks for listening. Wait, firstly, Tennessee has a state senate? Every state has a state senate. Oh, they don't, but I know what you mean. They don't. Every, every state, they don't have a state senate in the United States. Okay. Which one doesn't? Nebraska. But doesn't I have, have a state senate? We're going to see right now. You're going to see if you know what you're talking about or not. Nebraska... My understanding is Nebraska abolished its Senate in like the 30s or something crazy, but they still have senators. Oh, you're 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 sweating right now. State Senate. Oh no, Steve. Oh no. They have them. No, they don't. The Nebraska legislator is, the, is the legislator of the U U.S. state of Nebraska. And it has senators. Uh, it has. It, in Nebraska, we have, like, it's called the unicameral. There's just one no, body. You, list of senators' landing pages. You have oh. Raymond Aguilar. You yeah. have Joni Albrecht. John Ark. Christy Arment. Oh, you don't even know shit. You don't even know where Gaza is on the map. Bro, you're right. Another. Okay, look. To be fair, maybe we've been too hard on the guy for not knowing where Gaza is on the map. Because our boy here doesn't know what country he's in. Poor, poor man. Just a babe in the woods. Their photo. Hold on. No, 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 no. I was just saying because you were leaning away oh, from my phone again. This one right here. Is it good? Oh, you're... Nebraska's unicameral, but I think it's a senate. I don't think it's called a senate. I think it's just called the... What is it? What is it called? Um... But, like, the, the funny part is that he expressed surprise at the beginning of that. Wait, wait. Wait, you have a state senate? What? Like this was this was novel to him. My dude, you've been doing local politics for years. Years. Yeah, it's the Nebraska legislature, but the members are called senators. So it's like I don't know. <sighs> most most informed political commentator. The genius. Genius voice of a generation. He's like um it's like Dr. House. 
Destiny is currently trying to shirk a bet he made with JSTOCK for $100 over the recent stabbing case, I think, being carried out in Wisconsin. The river one? What was the bet? Was it that he would be found uh, innocent or guilty? I saw that, and I don't have a lot of... I, I'm, I'm like, I have sympathy for nobody in that exchange, but the, um, the wielding of the knife... What I heard was Steven's position on that is that, um... Unlike Rittenhouse, because the knife wasn't displayed, uh, therefore there isn't the same, I guess, telegraphing of, of like a threat as in the case of Rittenhouse. So he thinks that the the stabber should be considered guilty. I mean, I'm personally like of the opinion that probably both should. I don't. I don't think that. I'd have to watch the thing again, but I don't think. I don't think shanking the girl in the river was uh, was justified. No, Destiny's like the light yagami from Death Note. Get your lore right. True. Yeah, yeah. True. Well, um... Who would Dan be, then? Dan would be, uh... Oh, what's his name? What's the, um... What's the Shinigami's name? Why are names just, like, dropping out of my memory recently? Death Note characters. Ryuk. Ryuk. Anyways. You already took the photo? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. I thought Nebraska had the only bi camera, but it's the only unicameral. I'm making sexy photos for you. You're fine. Are they good? Okay. Um, Mr. Borelli. You are all over the place. Um, what was his question again? The question is, have you ever made a teacher snap so much they broke down into tears? God, look, he is not happy. He is, it's not, he is not a happy camper. Should teachers have guns? That wasn't the question. I think it's really unfortunate, but we always bullied the fuck out of substitute teachers. I agree. Erudite has to be Misa? Nah. Nah. Erudite's not going to jump off a building for Steven. Uh, erudite is, um, erudite's that, that one chick who he manipulates into, like, crashing the truck or whatever. It was always the goal to bully the fuck out of substitute teachers. Like, you'd say, like, oh, we usually do this during class, and you try to mislead them and say some retarded shit. Yeah. I remember there was one particular class where we had a bunch of class clowns, where there was, like, a, um, there was, like, a, a built-in desk to the floor, hmm. and then there was, like, the chalkboard behind, and then there were all of our desks. And the goal sometimes was if there was a substitute teacher walking back here, the goal would be how many students could crawl forward on the floor and like move around the desk beneath it as the teacher walked around. How old were you here? Uh, I was a freshman, but the, my classmates were all juniors. So I just like sat in the back like a shy fucking kid and watched. Gotcha. And the, um, yeah, the. Oh God, it, it, they're I even, look at this. They're even roasting the beard in the, in the chat here. Can you see this? Hang on. Let me just uh, let me use this one. Oh, why is the Twitch one not? We said transform. That's just not even showing up. Oh, well, that's weird. Okay, whatever. We'll use this one. Um, oh, screen capture. Here we go. Like just, just damn. Destiny could look much better without this freaking beard. I mean, to be honest, like. You know what I'm noticing here? If he just, like, shaved it down, like, just had it, like, a light sort of, like, like a shadow, like a stubble, it could work. It could work. I personally think you should just do the mustache. Just do the Tony Stark thing. I think, you know, he'll look sleazy, but then sleazy's kind of his brand. I think he'd be fine with that. You know? they got up to five once on a teacher and she just lost it and then we watched some stupid fucking video for the rest of class i mean do you ever think the teacher lost it enough that they would fucking blast you <laughs> i don't know man some teachers get real fucking mad yeah i know um should teachers have guns that's really the substance of the question that's correct that is indeed the substance of that question what do you think no yeah i don't think so either
I don't trust those. It has nothing things. to do though with people breaking down or anything. It just has to. It's a numbers game. He looks extremely divorced. He he looks extremely unhappy. This is a very unhappy man. And as tragic as school shootings are, they are incredibly fucking rare in the United States. But if you put a gun in every single classroom, the amount of kids that would die by accidents. Here, do you want to see something rough? I'll show you something rough. Okay. You think that's bad? Yeah, he had a photo of Peter Bogosian recently. It is it is the roughest thing I have seen. Just oh my god. This poor man. That is That is unfortunate. That is deeply, deeply unfortunate. It's time. Steven, it's walking at the door. Fire it before it quits. Oof. I don't know how he looks older than Bogosian, but somehow. Anyways, enough being mean to this poor small man's beard. Alone would be, I would guess, an order of magnitude higher. Like you'd have a thousand students a year dying of some stupid fucking gun accident at a school. Would be my guess. Yes, I uh, I agree with that assessment for the most part. Um, you think there should be metal detectors? Sure, for the dangerous yes. enough area. Sunday didn't even, add a, didn't even add a content warning. I'm not the kind of leftist, bro. Right, yeah, for sure. What about an all schools metal detector? If it's a dangerous area. Can you not grow a full beard? Well, as a consequence, I'm presuming of the stress of preparing for the Finkelstein debate, because you can't prepare for the Finkelstein debate in that much time. Um, he developed, like, severe alopecia. So, like, if you saw, like, a couple months ago, he had, like, a giant stretch, a strip going all the way down his neck, just missing. And it was in the shape. Was in the shape of Palestine or Gaza? It was. The it was. I think it was in the shape of the Gaza Strip or something. It's like God's justice. Sarah, sure. If a school has a history of no but violence, then why? Well, I mean, oh, you know, that wouldn't have helped. In uh, where's this? Where's that? Uvalde. Right. Uvalde, there probably wasn't yeah. a lot of violence there, and then there was. So should there be metal detectors in all schools? Uh, I would come down to a cost thing. Schools already generally struggle with costs. How would you change that? You know, because right now schools are kind of, they're, they're, they're funded by uh, property tax. You think that's a good way of doing it? How would you change that? Right now he just texted to a woman. He's like, sorry, this is going a little bit longer than I thought. It's going to be a little bit longer until I can come down and fuck you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> sorry. Um, that poor woman. How would... Schools are funded by... Why, you know what? Fuck it. Okay, Who cares? That, so it looks like about last year, it looks like somebody in chat said, I had no... Why would I say that without a single fucking shred of evidence or whatever? Um, the uh, Last year, about 1% of deaths were preventable slash accidental. So if that's... If they were 40, 50... About 50,000 deaths, that means about... Why would he say that without a shred of evidence? I, I don't know. It's an excellent question. So they'll be, they'll be pondering that question in the history books if he's mentioned in them. Why would he say the stuff he does without a shred of evidence? It's 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 fantastic. It really, really is. Well, anyways, that's what I wanted to cover there. Finally, we have uh, because people seem to like the Sargon content. We have a short, short thing that I've been wanting to look at. I don't even know what it's about. Called a uh, bug posting from four hours ago, and it is blissfully short. Only. 12 minutes long. There we go. Sargon of Akkad bug posting. You may have noticed a weird kind of pathological... Why are liberals on the side of the bugs? Interesting. Altruism that comes from a specific kind of person that has manifested itself into the internet meme of bug posting. In April of 2019, Vox published an article by Matty Inglesias called The Great Awakening, in which he documented a particular kind of change in left-wing In the past five years, white liberals have moved so far to the left on questions of race and racism that they are now on these issues to the left of even the typical black voter. Um, hang on, let's see here.
Like that's not that's not the that's not the the scale. You're not you're not reasonable or not based upon the most popular position in a demographic. That's not how that works. Politics in the United States. In the past five years, white liberals have moved so far to the left on questions of race and racism that they are now, on these issues, to the left of even the typical black voter. Social media- How does one quantify this? Well, do you, do you see him doing an analysis of this article? No, of course not. He doesn't have the brain cells for it. He just- he saw a line in a thing meant for popular consumption, and he just rolled with it like this is established. This is- this is some profound statement. Media, he notes, facilitated a dramatic exactly. shift in, in his bones. ideology. Anyone who has been following this ideology for any amount of time will notice that the impetus for this drive was from woke activist journalists writing in left-wing news outlets as the wellspring from which this ideology was disseminated. But the source of the ideology itself is from critical race theory, something I have documented in detail on lotuses.com. I'll leave a link in the description. It's a crummy commercial. This guy is so lazy. For anyone who wants to know. So more. lazy. The internal logic of critical race theory, what we call intersectionality or wokeness, works in tandem with any other identity group. And critical race theory is not identical with intersectionality, by the way. Intersectionality is just the, the uh, a frame of reference, a frame of analysis that acknowledges the compounding effects of intersecting relations of racial categorization, gender categorization, etc., etc., creating new categories. That's all it is. And by the way, you'd actually be really stupid not to adopt that frame of reference, because to not adopt an intersectional frame of reference is to assume that these things can't interact with each other and can't impact things like outcomes and whatnot, which they obviously do. That's sort of intuitively true. Um, even, even a conservative should be able to, like, uh, acknowledge this. And within the existing logic of liberal civil rights theory, the drive for the... The existing logic of liberal civil rights theory? What? Rights theory. Hang, the hang drive wait, wait, wait. Logic of liberals works in tandem with any other... Or one, for anyone who wants to know more. The internal logic of critical race theory, what we call intersectionality or wokeness works in tandem with any other identity group and within the existing logic of liberal civil rights theory. The existing logic of liberal civil rights theory is what gives rise to things like, um, like, uh, oh, fuck, why did, why did I lose the name again? I keep, uh, Rawls. Like, sort of, like, the Rawlsian idea of a, a theory of justice orbiting a kind of neutrality, a kind of general in disinterest of the state form and of politics to the particular circumstances of birth so that justice ends up being a kind of fairness of application of politics as a kind of game as opposed to uh you know the deliberate communal willful action and planning stuff like that um li liberal logic is actually directly opposed uh to to critical theory partially because a lot of critical theory is specifically critical of liberal presumptions, um, specifically of liberal ideas of subjectivity and, and statehood and things like that. So, he just he doesn't know what he's talking about, which is su surprise. Surprise. Sargon doesn't know what he's talking about. Imagine my shock. The drive for the equality of recognition of rights opens up the questions of intersecting identities in a way which liberal civil rights law did not anticipate. With the questions of liberty sufficient... Yeah, that's why it's not in tandem. You just, you just obviously contradicted yourself. Come on, Carl, you're on television. ...answered, the questions of equality were used as a blade and driven by communists into the soft part that liberals had no defense against. If people are, in fact all the same, and there are disparate outcomes between the races, then the only explanation for this difference can come from inherent racial biases and unfair discrimination from within the liberals themselves. No, it can come from, for example, economic disparities. It can come, for example, from uh, biological disparities. Biological disparities arising from economic disparities, arising or giving rise to, or both, um, Nutritional disparities, disparities of opportunity, 
disparities of education, etc., etc. That's that's how intersectionality works. You take a poor person, you deny their children access to education or only access to low quality education, or low access to like good food, etc., or a low stress environment, or all of them together, as is more often the case. And lo and behold, most of them turn out poor. If you have a a uh, historical precedent for these conditions. Uh, falling along racialized lines, then bada bing bada boom, you've got uh, racial disparities that are not the result of individual humans' prejudices. They're the result of prejudices embedded in historical processes because left to fester unaddressed. This is really simple. Like, really simple. And the system that they run. Therefore, anti-discrimination efforts were turned against the system of law itself and the ideology that justified it using the very values that that ideology had used to justify itself. Yeah, that's that, that's how development works. This is how Christianity gave rise to liberalism, for example, in conjunction with Republican political theory. That's how that works. That's how development works. If, if it didn't work that way, then you could actually give no credit whatsoever for any development two preceding ideological situations that gave rise to it. That's kind of like, it's kind of the whole thing. If, 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 if new ideas and new perspectives and new like critical approaches to things didn't unfold from previous situations, but simply like what came down from above like a laser, then you wouldn't be able to say, for example, that Western values gave rise to anything. I don't think that's something that Carl wants to admit. Against this attack, there was, of course, no liberal defense. And this attack on the consequences of civil rights law collapsed the legitimacy of the equality pillar of liberal ideology very quickly. That makes no sense. And made discrimination... That was actually actually just a non-sentence. That was incoherent. ...and inequality the primary concerns of liberals everywhere. We are not equal. This was demonstrated. Therefore, liberals, to save liberalism have to make that the primary concern. This is how wokeness conquered liberalism from within and turned the liberals woke. It cast into doubt... But the liberals aren't woke. The liberals actually, for the most part, are, are landing on a very conservative line with respect to international law, as we saw in the case of, uh, of Palestine and Gaza specifically, obviously, um, in the case of uh, trans rights and things of that sort. Um, when you look at the gender criticals and the people jumping to defend Israel's right to exist, they're by and large either coming from people in the Trump camp or they're coming from liberals as opposed to leftists. That's that's where it's coming from. The core premises of liberalism itself and suggested that if that wasn't true... Is he rest- conflating liberal and left? Yes, he is. If it isn't true. Matt observes that... Pollsters began to see a rapid, sustained change. White Democrats started suddenly expressing dramatically higher levels of concern about racial inequality and discrimination, while showing greater enthusiasm for racial diversity and immigration. America's liberals cannot help it. They are placed on the horns of a dilemma. On one hand, they could either abandon liberalism, and perhaps be forced to admit that, in fact, we are not all the same, which would imply that instead we are all different, and that these differences might actually aggregate in groups, and therefore maybe we could expect group differences in outcomes. Or, on the other hand, they could focus on the groups who are perceived to have unequal outcomes with the others, and attempt to artificially improve their status through their own actions to counteract the mysterious and elusive discrimination which exists somewhere in the system. America's liberals, of course, chose the latter. They are, after all, liberals. This is the only moral system that they know, and to admit that it is based on false premises would be to say that they know nothing of morality and have no basis from which to make moral judgments. Um, um, but w- like, he, he pre-writes this, right? Like, he's got to look at this on a page and go, mm-hmm. oh yeah, this is going to hit hard. He's not saying anything. He's he's literally not saying anything. And look, this guy is such a cretin 
CRT, I'm going to explain it to you. Here's my educational content. Yeah, pay for this. Pay extra for this. It opens up the possibility. What a bug-like, what a bug-like attitude towards public education, if you actually believe any of this stuff. ...ability that any judgments that they had made so far were not just wrong, but immoral themselves. And they have hitherto spent their entire lives as bad people. Well, no, they'd just be wrong. Right? If they're mistaken, they're mistaken. The whole point behind someone being a bad person is that they're motivated by, by malice. There's something pernicious in their character. They weren't just mistaken. This is why we take intent, for example, into account when judging the severity of crimes. Of course they chose the latter. America's liberals, therefore, are now on a mission to find bias, prejudice, and discrimination of any form, wherever they might be found, and root them out. If they don't, they are forced to admit that liberalism is untrue and step into that moral chasm that is opening up before them. Yeah, that's not what This is what do. informs their insane crusading zeal against otherwise normal and healthy behaviors. They are going By the to... way, you can tell that his target audience right now are, are basically just Fox News watching Republicans because normal people even do not call leftists generally liberals. The only people who conflate liberal and leftists are, they're one of two kinds. Either people like Destiny who are trying to pass themselves off as leftist representation so they have justification for going onto panels when in fact they largely agree with everybody there. Um, or uh, Stephen Crowder types that, that refer to liberals when they're referring to radical feminists, critical race theorists, etc., etc., who are decidedly not liberal. They're specifically critics of liberalism. Marxists, critics of liberalism. Um, all of these people, like, these, these are not liberals. These are people who primarily uh, regard liberals as conservatives and are critical of the liberal state and and liberal social categories that are downstream or upstream as it were from it to lose all of their moral authority and they are very very afraid of it in 2019 tablet magazine published an article entitled I, I will say this like I think the small soul bug man is a great is a great insult I, I have appreciation for it. I think it's misapplied. I think Carl, for example, is an excellent example of a small-souled bug man. And I'm going to I'm gonna give a very clear argument for why. Back in, like, uh, 2015, 2016, I can't quite remember when, but back when I used to watch him a long time ago, I remember he had a conversation with Mr. Medeker. Um, and in that, he, basically, Carl got the brilliant idea. Brilliant, okay? He saw that... Uh, there are like political Isl Islamic radicals in the Middle East and they call themselves I Islamists. Okay, so he's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to be, we're going to be liberalists. We're going to be aggressive, militant advocates for V for Vendetta style liberal values, right? And he spent like hours, or how, it felt like hours anyways, he spent however long um, arguing with Mr. Medeker, uh, sort of like a, I don't know if I'd call him right wing, but he's he's an edgy, edgy guy, um, trying to get this very popular uh, conservative rightish um, YouTuber podcast or whatever to join the liberalists. Join me, Jim. Um, and and he just wouldn't have any of it. It, it was kind of embarrassing actually, because it's like just join my clubhouse, Jim. And uh, and and why is he now a traditionalist instead of a liberal? Because it wasn't the popular position on the right. How weak do you have to be? How small do you have to be? Oh, this thing that, that governs, like, my, my morals, my sense of right and wrong, my, my ideals in their totality. Yeah, uh, it's, not everybody agrees with it, so you know what, I'm just going to fold, and um, I'm just, uh, I'm just C-tier Fox News now. Like, it's, it's pitiful. So, I mean, liberals, by the way, are absolutely on the side of the bugs, but the bugs are this guy. These, these, this, this, is, this is the small-souled bug man. Small-souled bug man with a big waist and a fatty heart. Ugh. Does anybody have a link to that, the Sargon versus Medicare thing? That would be fun. That would be some fun vintage, vintage Sargon content. If somebody can find that, let me know. America's White Saviors, in which they wrote, Over the past decade, the baseline attitudes expressed by white liberals on racial and social justice questions have become radically more liberal. What does that mean, radically more liberal? 
What does that mean? Ra do we even define it? In one especially telling example of the broader trend, white liberals recently became the only demographic group in America to display a pro-outgroup bias, meaning that among all the different groups surveyed, white liberals were the only one that expressed a preference for other racial and ethnic communities above their own. What on earth does that have to do with liberalism? Like, what does that have... What does that have to do with liberal? What is the what is the connection? I imagine it would have a lot of slurs because of Medicare. That's what I got an editor for. It's okay. My audience is this is an adult channel, by the way. Okay, this is an adult channel, and we cover we cover edgy stuff sometimes. We cover hard stuff sometimes, including death, racism, all that stuff. So, no no hard feelings if you can't watch it, but that's what we do. Um, they wear less clothes, maybe. Actually, uh, I I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Um, <laughs> the, most of the, uh, most of the radical leftists I've seen, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird contrast. You wouldn't expect it. Um, most of the ones I've seen have, you know, a healthier relationship with sexuality, just generally from what I've seen. Um, definite exceptions and we're in content creation, so they're loud exceptions, but, uh, you know, not not nearly as much. You don't you don't see as much of the uh, the the the. It's, it's I don't want to make any hard statement about that. It's it's so easy to just have to eat your words afterwards. But my general experience has been parche some some absurd outliers like yeah. Sargon versus Kevin Logan and Christy Winters is very funny. Christy, uh, I can't stand Christy Winters. We can understand precisely why they do this, and the otherwise mystifying behavior of woke activists acting against their own interest becomes clear, as does why this has developed. By the way, acting against their own interests means acting against white interests here. By the by, it's not a liberal value to have, uh, to, to, to do politics as part of a racial cabal. Carl. Like that's that's kind of antithetical to, to liberal values. That's not it's not more liberal to prefer outgroups, but it is absolutely anti liberal to prioritize racial in groups. Absolutely. In fact, one of the um one of the, the major uh uh liberal challenges to the passport system was precisely because it limited on the grounds of a racial categorization. Uh, the ability of Indian migrants as British subjects, because India was under the crown, to travel freely within within the 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 British British Empire, because the ability to relocate oneself, to move, to consent to one's location and to one's local government, critical part of liberal theory. It's it's actually the it's 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 the single defining point. Consent of the governed. If you cannot choose to be ruled otherwise, then you can't consent. Not in a meaningful sense. Even if you happen to accidentally, there'd be no way to determine this because you had no choice. What does it mean to consent to a, 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 a condition that you have no choice in? It's, it's a meaningless, it's a meaningless statement. What is described as a racial outgroup preference. Where other racial groups show a relatively consistent preference for people who are like them, white liberals display a severely inverted outgroup preference. You know what that entail? You know what that implies, by the way? That implies, to my eyes at least, that other racial groups see significant danger in deprioritizing their own group. And I riddle me this, Carl. Why do you suppose... Uh, North American and, and European white people would have a safer time, would have more comfort with not taking a cabalistic approach to racial politics. Why, what do you suppose would contribute to that? Look up Mr. Medicare vs. Sargon of Akkad Gamergate 2.0 Killstream. Ooh, ooh I, think, I think that might be it. Okay, let's, let's try and find this. That'll be, that'll be fun. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't know. Um... I don't know. All right, here we go. I suppose. I suppose I would just say. Uh, uh, where are my appetizers? Okay, guys. Obviously, 
obviously very uh oh my god this is in light of recent events i wanted to upload the clip where sargon of akkad wanted to rally the troops for gamergate 2.0 by getting trump to tweet about it okay slur warning friends these are not nice people i know you all know this by now but just due diligence this is sargon of akkad versus mr medicare this is for 2018 Oh, that's more recent than I thought. I've been waiting. Yeah, for I, I, would say, I would just say it's 30, uh, 30 minutes waiter. Where are my appetite? Actually. My frittatas are going to get cold. Can I, speak to your, can I speak to your manager? No. I, I, this Maybe service, is, this like... service is horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I heard, I heard <laughs> you were going to be pitching a, a big brained idea, so I wanted a front row seat to watch it. Yeah, actually, I'm kind of glad you're here, Jim. Oh, I, I'm sure you Oh, this is it. This is it. Oh, yes. Oh, this takes me back. You are. I am actually. I, I'm. I have a. I have a secret love for Medicare, not because I agree with any of his politics, not because I think some of the stuff he says isn't horrible, but because he takes these these awful idealistic righties and he squeezes them, squeezes them. When they are mugged by a reality, it is with Mister Medicare's mug that they are mugged with. I'm genuinely. Hey, hey Ralph, can I say one thing here? before before Please. we hear this amazing idea? Uh, yeah. 20, 20,000 viewers, and look who shows up in chat. Oof. How you doing? How you doing, Oof. Carl? How you doing? I'm good. Um, so, you know they keep talking about Gamergate. No, who's they? <laughs> the left. Uh, the, left. <laughs> the collective left. Have they all yeah. gotten together to discuss this? Okay. Yeah, they they go on about it all the time. Um, the latest one was, you know, the, obviously Kavanaugh. The guy who was alleged to have been in the room with him was a guy called Mark Judge. He apparently wrote two articles in support of Gamergate, <laughs> citing Mr. Repsion, a YouTuber. I did see. Oh, that. it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna be a sad day when he passes. Yeah, for yeah, for we talked about on the kill stream. I don't know how many time. You know how often you get to catch. Yeah, that was show, like two weeks ago. I think we, yeah. we did talk yeah. about it on the show. Yeah. yeah, it was like two weeks ago. Um, but that's pretty recent, really. And then you think like all the other ridiculous. Well, I mean, it, I mean like, it's, it's recent if you don't watch Ralph. But if you watch Ralph Weekly, you you heard about it when it was breaking those. That's, okay, that, that's great. But no, it is great. God, God, he's coming off as such a dweeb. Oh, oh, I almost feel bad for Lance him. Lance loves it. We love being on top of current events. That's what makes it so delicious to watch Ralph. He's sumptuous, don't you know? <laughs> I'm sure it does. But it's not just that, is it? You know, there are there are loads of other, and we could we could find a huge list of things that they've said about Gamergate to magnify it. I mean, I I have seen the most colossal overreaches in the description and sort of influence of Gamergate coming from the left, you know, like the Guardian, the Independent, you know, like shit like this. They bring up all the time and they're always making Gamergate out to be this giant fucking boogie monster. And the FBI investigated Gamergate and found that Gamergate did nothing wrong. I, I'm, I feel like I'm in a time warp. We're in 2018, right? This, this yeah, hashtag yeah. is dead yeah, at this point. It's been yeah, four yeah. years. I mean, I yeah. feel like we're talking like about chinology. Yeah. Should I get my guy Fox no, no, mask no, off to talk about this case? <laughs> no, 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 you're missing the point. You're missing the point. We're uh, not talking about game again, right? It doesn't really matter about game again. What matters is the boogeyman that the left have conjured up. And they've conjured up a fucking hell of a boogeyman. And you know they're still afraid of it. It's still there, there under the surface, right? When they're this guy says the left, he literally just means Brianna Wu and... The Mongolian hordes behind her, I suppose. I have no idea. They have this kind of subconscious fear, I think, that some, and that's why they keep. It's literally just Brianna Wu. Keep bringing up. I mean, fuck. Justin Trudeau condemned. Brianna Wu. Brianna Wu has struck so much fear into this man's heart. Just dear God. Game again. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. Well, right? now, Carl, I have to be fair. I have to say, oh, it really, Carl, it, it, it really depends on the politician, now, doesn't it? I guess it would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I yeah. mean, you've got to take it on a case by case basis. You do. Yeah. And what, who, 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 uh, who on on the other side <laughs> might actually support Game Gate? Who uh, on what what sides are we talking about? Democrats and Republicans. Well, Brianna Wu, as that happens. <laughs> Who supports Gamergate in the Republican camp? Mm. I fucking don't know. Oh, in the Republican? Oh, my God. Mark Judge. I, I don't pay. I, don't yeah, pay I can tell you literally, <laughs> Mark Judge, the guy who was alleged to have been in the room with Kavanaugh, supports Gamergate. <laughs> Congratulations for Mark Judge, I guess. Yeah. But what? I guess just where are you yeah, going with right? this exactly? Isn't that, isn't that funny? Isn't that just fucking oh, exactly. amazing? 
Like the idea that there's a game yeah. gay supporter, like in the room with the guy who's alleged to have sexually assaulted the woman, who is then the center of the entire fucking like world's media for a week. That's that's fucking incredible. Sunday, this was after Sargon of Akkad insulted and implied Medicar was some sort of poor idiot because Sargon could afford a suit. But he couldn't afford a suit. The suit didn't fit him. That's why people were making fun of him for it being too tight. <laughs> it was a bit surreal, but but what, I mean, what, like, what, where are you going with this, though? That's what I don't... Well, where do you think I'm going with this? I have... Uh, I have no Sargon, idea. Sargon, I literally have... Steve Bannon literally built the new right off Gamergate explicitly. Yeah, but you don't understand, Brooks. The the important thing. <laughs> Just oh my god. I have no I idea. Really like, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you can do this. I, I I'm not even both. being sarcastic. I, like I, you I message me. And, I, can I just one. say you message you me? You don't understand, Brooks. The real battle, the real battle is uh, is getting is getting Medicare's audience to to become, you know, you know, remember what not so erudite said, right? Or Stormfront. I can't remember. They they blend in my brain. Um, you don't, you don't want, you don't want followers, you want soldiers. And you seem like really hype about whatever the idea was. Uh, oh, I'm I, fucking hype. And I have I'm no idea what you're talking hype. about. And then you start this talking is, about Gamergate and I'm just like, what, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, this is, this is why I'm thrilled you're here, Jim. I am fucking thrilled you're here, right? I'm thrilled that you guys, the, some of the core people in Gamergate are here so I can talk to you about this. This is exactly what I wanted. Do you not think it would be really interesting to see how far we can make this go? Who's we? <laughs> I, that sounds very collectivist. I thought we we're individualists here, Carl. <laughs> the collective internet. Do you not think that would be funny? Do you I think mean, anybody on the internet gives two fucks about Gamergate at this point? It's it's no, become a joke. No, like, no, I don't, Jim. That's the point. Brianna Wu, Carl, got to reach across. The, Brianna Wu, she's there. She has she has the she has the money and the will. That's the that's the entire point. <laughs> what is your pitch exactly? Get get the band back together? Is that what is that what you're saying? Like I don't. I don't understand. What, what would Look, they think Gamergate is a tremendous, universal, and categoric evil, right? Who else do they think is a categoric evil? Uh, I feel like I'm fucking lost. What are we talking- what is your plan? Like, what is your- I guess, I what's your idea? Hit, hit, hit us with it. Try and use a bit of- just- just try and look a bit ahead. Just look a bit ahead. How- Look at the- if, if we're if talking you, about Gamergate, I'm looking behind ahead. me, not ahead of me. <laughs> no, you're not. You're looking way, way ahead. But you just- I don't know, you can't seem to do it, can you? I know I can't. I need you to shine a light. He's not, he's not the Kwisatz Haderach. Think of it from the left wing's point of view, right? They mm. are genuinely afraid of Gamergate, which is why they keep talking about Gamergate. Is the punchline here Gamergate did 9-11? Because we made that joke already. No, but it could it could be something <laughs> nearly like that. Like, effectively like that, right? So... <laughs> But what, so, what, right. what are you saying? Yeah, like, no, is, it, is it what I said, though? What, what are you are saying? Are saying Gamergate raped and killed a woman behind an Arby's in 1999? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That was just I, me, saying, Gator, not Gamergate. Better, yes, right? yes, yes. So, again, if Gamergate is the eternal boogeyman, what would be the worst thing that Donald Trump could do? Uh, He's I mean, not going to co-sign Gamergate. It doesn't even know what to do. What, it could most... tweet out hashtag Gamergate? Is that what you're like? Well, most people have no idea what Gamergate was or is. I don't think you, you realize that it's a thing on the internet, but most most people have so, no yeah, idea. So, yeah, we, we talked about this before. I, I, of course, know exactly what Gamergate was. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, we all know. I wouldn't, of course, I wouldn't, we, I wouldn't yeah, start presuming we, what people are thinking like that. We all know. I'm just saying the public at large, probably maybe 25%. Yeah. Of now, everybody on Twitter don't. knows what the fuck it is. You know, a lot of yes, the, you know, journalists and stuff know what it is. But uh, yeah. as far as the public at large, they don't. You, okay, how do you get them. black people to join the alt-right? Give them watermelons. <laughs> oh my god. Fried chicken on, and Kool-Aid helps too. That humor. <laughs> all right. All right. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. That is a reference by the way. That's a that's a reference to uh that's what that's what Sargon called Richard Spencer in a in a debate. <clears throat> How on earth is this still up? Exactly. Disavow. Why does it sound like grown-up Stewie from Family Guy? He does. He does, actually. Oh yeah, he just said that. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, I thought that was a bit slow. You get Hillary Clinton to denounce the alt-right. Wait, sorry, was there a punchline? I could only hear crickets. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're being serious. I'm sorry. It's already happened, Jim. 
This is documented and verifiable. When that accelerated so fast. It actually didn't. That's the weird thing. So the reason why this is being brought up is because Sargon has a long and storied history of, uh, I forgot how bad this was. Different era. Um, Sargon has a long and storied history of these really clever rhetorical tactics. Here's one. Um, who was that? Uh, it was, it was like Jess Phillips or something. Um, Yeah, I think it was just just Phillips, British politician. Uh, he started a hashtag against Jess Phillips. This lady here. Um, actually, it's probably in her bio here. Um, he started a hashtag saying, and I quote, I wouldn't even rape you, Jess Phillips. Literally. So you had... Thousands of people tweeting at her. This was really clever in his head. Because he thought, oh, look, it's it's innocuous sentence, but these crazy feminists, they're, they're going nuts over it. It's like, Carl, come on. <laughs> um, in a debate with Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer, by the way. Very bad guy, but... In that debate, uh, he said, and I'm quoting, and completely for obvious reasons... You guys are like white. It's just it's just incredible. That was a grave embarrassment. Yeah, and then he tried to run for uh then he tried to run for public office. Just brilliant. Brilliant people. When Hillary Clinton denounced the alt right, loads of black people took to Twitter saying, Well, I guess I'm alt right then. And I was speaking to a few of the alt right people and they were freaking the fuck out, thinking the idea that a bunch of black people are gonna invade a white supremacist movement because nobody really knew. And so Hillary Clinton kind of set the narrative on it. I mean, did I, I? I don't have like official membership numbers from the alt right, but did I mean? Is there any evidence no, no, that caused a spike? Okay, okay, yeah. But it was just you know, like you know, people. You'd see a lot of. I got to catch a band from YouTube for that clip. I'll I'll cut it out. It happens. Like this is this is on right. Like this is on YouTube. So I I'd be very surprised. People on Twitter sort of freaking out about it, and understandably so. I mean, if you're a white supremacist, the last thing you want is black people stealing your movement or something. You know, that that that's pretty. Uh... It's yeah, I mean, funny. I remember her speech and everything. I actually thought that that was... Here, where's the... Um, let's see if we can just skip to it. Here, let's go to 30 minutes in. How do you propose to? I guess what what I'm getting, I don't know. Maybe maybe if you said that there, I didn't I didn't really catch it. But how how do you propose to make it? Happen? Like what what are you going to do to make it happen? What are you okay. what are you trying to tell other yeah. people to do? To yeah, make it happen? This is. Can we at least agree Sargon joining UKIP and bringing Tommy Robinson was a positive? They they were never going to do anything anyway. So this is another thing, right? So the way the way things happen is by connections. It's someone knows someone knows someone, and you have to ask them to get get their email to send to you you know so you can email them networking like basically this. yeah it is networking yeah and i don't really like it i would prefer it if everyone had a public email like i do but they don't a lot of people keep their de contact de details secret and it's annoying and you have to go through agents and things like this but um but what i'll try and do is talk to people and you know try and get emails for people and and um and try and get them to pay attention to a cultural phenomenon but there needs to be a cultural phenomenon, and that's why, um, that's why I need you guys. Okay, so let me get this straight. Your plan is ninety percent us. So what will what will happen apparently is um, the uh, the content will be taken down, and I'll get a warning. So if I show that kind of content again in ninety days, we'll get a strike. That's that's fine. We'll we'll be okay. Doing the legwork and ten percent you sending out emails. No. What have I misheard then? How does this? What's the All breakdown? I'm not going to explain to you though, Jim. You're just wrong. So, what do you recommend? <laughs> you just literally said I'll email people to get them to pay attention to a cultural phenomenon, and then you guys. Yeah, that, that's one thing I will do, Jim. That's one. Okay, thing. well, fill us in on the rest of this twenty-year plan. Well, I don't think I should, given this is a live stream. Okay. 
Oh, now you're taking my advice. That's good. <laughs> I think it was good advice, don't you? Yeah, it is. Okay, well, well I'll I, take it then. Thanks. I did consider. Remember what Sun Tzu said: make your plans as dark as the night. I did think about that. Maybe keep it on the low, but I mean, okay, it's well, too late now. Delete the stream afterwards if you have to, or whatever. You know. Ah, oh, no, you don't. But the thing is, you that. know, it's not like be sensible though. None of the people who are listening surely want to alert the far left that we're about to make them look stupid. Well, I, I will say this, um, you know, I actually, you know, there are leftists who watch this show, too. I mean, it's not just all, you know. Well, then they can, people. yeah, but hang on, how much funnier will that be? If they I haven't start... heard new Medicare content in like eight years. He has like, um, he has a bunch of shit going on medically. He has like indolent lymphoma, which apparently is like the mildest thing he has. He's got like a whole bunch of like um, autoimmune disorders going on. Like the guy's on death's door. He's been doing like occasional streams like every few months or so, but he's, uh, it's not looking good for Jim raising the alarm that we're going to try and make Donald Trump endorse Gamergate or ask him to endorse Gamergate. How funny does that sound on the fucking face of it? Like, you paranoid freak. And then Donald Trump might respond to it naturally without us doing a fucking thing. Perhaps. Uh, so, so you're saying collect? you're going to collect emails of people who might you know, be in it's touch not with leaders? You, you have to meet no, I mean Sunsa also said if you declare war without having already won the war, you have lost the war. I mean, you, you mean like contact data, but I, I'm asking, so you're talking to a broad-based audience here. You know, we're, we're the number one late-night show on YouTube. Uh, oh, I hate, yeah. to, hate to toot my own horn here. You but, were. Uh, Dude, um, but, but uh, so what, what, what should the people do, I guess? In, in it's all way. about Dan and Steven now. Okay, so the, the, the thing that I think we need to start doing, and, not, and I, I will be doing this as well, um, is finding everything that they've said about Gamergate that makes Gamergate sound scary, right? Makes it sound impressive and big. Like, you know, you remember when like, Gamergate's going to end up guys. on Mars? Gamergate put Trump... I mean, didn't they say Gamergate put Trump in the White House? Uh, yeah, I want to say it was Sarah Zhang that said that, actually, the, uh, mean, the racist the New York Times. I believe that was her that said that, yeah. Yeah, okay, it was, there was one on everyday everyjoe.com yeah not... she's not the only one that said it but I, that, I think that's where I first saw it yeah, yeah. right okay so um I yeah, want to say that by the way chat if you want to uh, if you want to see a proper drama segment remember when you super chat put in drama or jellyfish into your super chat so I know which meter to contribute it to I mean don't you know I won't bet my left on, nut man. on it but I think that that's attribute okay I'll, I'll... I'll put it in the sidebar so you can see it. But again, we can use all of this, right? Because them printing any of this is just a bonus to us. Here's, here's the record. Okay, let me... So we, we find everything like this, like... They're you know, coming together. Like we'll say, Gamergate be their did this. Undoing. Gamergate did that. We make it sound like Gamergate is really capable and really competent. You know, it's everywhere. It's in They're a ragtag bunch, but they get the job done. We'll use their sources. They're the ones building this narrative. And then all we need to do is present... Gamergate was invested by the FBI and found to do nothing wrong, and then, like, I don't know, you know, find, you know, in fact, Mark Judge's, Mark Judge's articles on it are perfect, because Mark Judge... Sargon's engagement is close to dead. Uh, it's weird. So Sargon actually does have a lot of, uh, he gets a lot of engagement, but, like, from viewers. He has a lot of dedicated viewers. Nobody talks about Sargon. Nobody talk. nobody cares. Like, nobody thinks about Sargon. It's, it's weird. Like, no, nobody's like, oh, this is, what, what did Sargon say? Like, people will do that with Destiny. Like, despite having, like, significantly fewer subscribers, da da da, da Destiny's actually been successful, at the very least, at making himself a known quantity. Um, I, I, like, an actively known quantity, I should say. Sargon has not. Sargon's sort of faded into the background. Um, just nobody gives a shit. People are bored. And I think what's probably happened is... Um, people have kind of realized he's boring. So the only people who watch him are the people who are boring. Who don't bother themselves with the opinions of other people. So he's uh, he's in his telepreacher phase, where it's it's just he's got this flock, and he just do 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 do. Simon Pierre Dubé, thank you for the two Canadian. The squid should rise, and Yogsathoth willing it shall. Judge the political, in, you know, involved in a political narrative. I never see Sargon, uh, not triggered. I never see Sargon mentioned anywhere. Yeah, no, he's. And he was in defense of Gamergate, and we... there we go. 
you know, know. in fact they, they all say the game gates like a... it's just weird to see people just lie the fbi didn't find nothing quote unquote it found a lot i mean it's it's weird psychologically but like statistically it's <laughs> It's, it's what they've been doing the entire time. Movement of Nazis that have put Donald Trump in the White House. In fact, Gamergate was a grassroots move, movement of people against the far left. Here's kind of surprised the Sargon didn't contact Fuentes. May actually get that Kanye influence. Medicare destroyed Fuentes as well. Destroyed. Before the whole, before Destiny like gave him that extra lease on life, um, he humiliated him. It's a, it's, it's a sight to behold. And it's, it really is just... Regardless of what you think about his politics or his positions or what he says and does, which are bad, I don't agree with them, but just by sheer dint of having a following and being a grounded, relatively normal person, he just wipes the floor with these clowns. Just wipes the absolute floor. Literally just by going like, okay, so what's your, what's your plan then? What are you actually doing? You got these high flute ideas. Ooh, we're going to... I'm Look, look. I'm going to get you all, we're going to put a team together. We're going to get the we're going to the, the Gamergate Avengers back together. And you're going to use your influence to... It's it's like... It's, it's cartoonish, it's infantile. Two guys talking history. Thank you for the $2 American jellyfish looks hungry. That it does, or that may just be... It's brain dead vacant stare, but potato potato. Here's some articles that Mark Judge wrote, you know, the guy with Kavanaugh. The, the F Medicare really is the Joker of Chuds. No, Medicare is the uh, Medicare is the it's the boomerang of Chuds. FBI inve investigated Gamergate, found they did nothing wrong. They're lying. You know, we'd like President Trump to use his platform to help us redeem the Captain our Boomerang rather. Our name or something like that. However you need to spin it, you know. However you need to sell it. Just like that, that, and the thing is, nothing about that is untrue. Nothing about that is untrue. That's a completely true narrative. And that's frankly what's happened. And this is not only a way we can, I mean, there are people in Gamergate who probably still aren't happy that the name is being smeared by the far left. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you you know, you might, Gamergate, fair enough, you can say it's full of faggots and, and twats and, and people trying to make money out of it and all this sort of stuff. But it wasn't a movement full of Nazis, you know? And that's how they've tried. The funny thing is, kind of was. It kind of was. Was it saturated? No, but it was. It had its fill. It's betrayal. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a movement full of women haters and all this sort of stuff. And so, <laughs> no, don't, don't... The movement wasn't full of Nazis. You know, it may. It may have been full of like all of these undesirable groups. Let me count them down the list. All of these degenerates and all of these inferior races and all of these homosexuals, etc. But it wasn't full of Nazis. No. You think, though, honestly, because I, I do think it, it had a lot of faggots in it, but at the same time, hey, you're proposing using something that people are still, some hangers on are still in. Editor, you gotta, like, beep these, okay? You know what? Use the, uh, use the Vosh. Oh! Uh, use that. That'll do. Well, then, I mean, I don't... Oh, like, uh, 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 I don't know Sargon said a no-no word? Yeah, he's so fucking based. Definitely uh, are some still. Yeah, is. talking about Gamergate, I, I, you want to use them as like a political cudgel to win points uh, with Twitter arguments with journalists. It kind of seems dickish. Oh, does it seem dickish? We get oh, it. oh, does it seem dickish? You little silly man. Does it seem dickish, Jim? I left the movement because I was sick of people using it for their own games. Why would I agree to do that now? Because this is a way that Gamergate can win. Because this is how we win the war, Jim. Can I ask you a question, Sargon? Sure. Okay. Are you trying to resurrect Gamergate because that's when your YouTube career was at its peak and now that it's dead, <laughs> it's, fucking, it's cratered? No. Because that's what it seems like to me. Let's okay. let's all do I, fucking Gamergate again. I, I really don't think my YouTube career was at its peak during Gamergate. Well, I do. Okay. Well, I, I want to say this, that uh, I just want to point out that the whiskey has not killed all my brain cells and that I was absolutely correct that uh, it was a Sarah Jean quote. And here's the quote. Breitbart played a key role in Gamergate. Congratulations, America. You put Gamergate in the fucking White House. And, and that's in the article that you linked. Perfect. So this is all out. stuff that we can just you know mesh together and say, look, Mr. Trump, they think that we elected you and they're smearing us all over the place. We did support you, probably. I mean, I know I did, you know, like... We support you, and we'd, we'd really appreciate it if you could just clear our name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I 
Trump, please clear the good name of Gamergate. You have the power now. So, so you're telling, you're saying people here tweet at Trump or send letters or no, it, no, it, it's no. Gonna, dear, dear Mr. President, Trump, say, not or, Trump particularly, um, or officials, I, I would, you know, elected officials, perhaps. I would, I would tweet them and say, look, you know, we were activists who supported Gamergate, and uh, you know, assuming you were, obviously, um, and. You know, they, they smear us all the time. They think we put Trump in the White House. We do support Trump, and the FBI investigated us to find we did nothing wrong. Could you please get Mr. Trump to just tweet out that we, you know, that he supports us or something? Because No, fuck you. Why does he care? You losers don't matter to him. He doesn't give a shit. We're sick of being told that we're terrible people. You know, it can be anything like that, because this is all true. You know, I, I've talked to so many people who are sick of being smeared for it. They've just, you know, gone, oh, whatever, I don't care. But I'm sure there are loads of people who'd love to see fucking a bit of redemption in this regard. So, you and know, part God. of the problem with Gamergate um, is, is, I mean, I guess a problem and a benefit. There was a wide tent, uh, especially at the beginning. And Carl took the fucking God Emperor memes literally. He's a child. Oh, God. Uh, not Pluto, thank you for the 499. Is this your first Sargon Medicare vid? Because, boy, you're in for a treat. Um, no, I saw this years ago. Years and years and years ago. It is a little known fact that I was actually, a long time ago, a Sargon viewer and appreciator. Because I, not too many years ago, disturbingly, was very, very stupid. Very stupid indeed. Um, it's amazing what five years of actual real life experience as an adult does to you. Dear Lord, like... God, so, so bad. And a lot of people had no problems... You know, keeping that wide tent and just letting people do their own thing. Nobody, nobody who has ever had to actually, like... I don't know Carl's, like, life history, but I do know this. He came onto the scene with a shitty webcam. Actually, no webcam. A really shitty mic. Like, like dollar store pen voice recorder mic. Um, just ranting about blue-haired feminists in college. Uh... And his previous, his previous endeavors were he tried to make a Pikmin uh, knockoff called, um, like, Necromancer or whatever, that he couldn't get done. That's, that's his, that's what he did with his life. So, I don't think this man has any, any, like, grasp whatsoever on, on just, like, What's involved in keeping yourself alive as a normal human being on a day-to-day -day level? Um, I think he's literally in the domain of like, oh, you just, uh, you make, you make a big media splash, and then you have the power, then you're Palpatine. So all we have to do, it's just, it's, it's just silly. Glad Sunday got better, we now have our strongest bookworm streamer. Um, that's because back in the day... My interest in theory was entirely to do with apologetics. I hadn't actually gone into political science yet, and I hadn't actually read proper theory yet. So, you know, I had some modest, very, very modest capacities, but I didn't know anything. A few years of getting to know anything, and, and you realize how silly this is. Uh, but but the, the coalition, the Gamergate coalition, quote-unquote, there were a lot well, of... President Day Proof College makes you stupid. Uh, no. No, just proof that it takes a long time to stop being stupid. I have, I have every every bit of sympathy for people who have a have a slow, long journey out of this stuff. Uh, leftists in that uh, there are a lot of people who um, used to support Gamergate now who are raging anti-Trump people. Um, sure, but and so I, I don't really know that a lot of these sections. people would be on board with it. I mean, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, but, I mean, they don't have to be. It's you know, we don't. It does. You know, if someone doesn't want to you know, try and redeem Gamergate's name in the public dialogue, and that's fine, you know, I mean, I don't mind if they don't care. Um, but this is something that, A, we could do in it. Imagine this being like a project. Imagine this being like a thing you devote time and energy to. Salvaging the good name of Gamergate. Anita Sarkeesian misrepresented us, Mr. President, please. We need you to correct the record. If we did it, it'd just be so fucking funny to see the reaction. B, it would be nice to be able to say, well, you know, Trump acknowledges that Gamergate did nothing wrong, blah, 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 FBI, blah, blah, blah. You know? Wouldn't that, um, wouldn't that be interesting? No. That, nobody would care. I mean, it, it would be, I, I would laugh if it happened. I just don't, I, I just tend to think 
Um, like like I said earlier, Trump Trump usually gets involved in, in stuff that's hot. You know what I mean? Like stuff that's... Yeah, jump ahead a little bit. But, um, and I'm trying to be completely fair to your idea. I saw a couple people in chat. Ralph, you're being too nice. Well, I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to hear it out. I, I just don't see... So this sounds like a lot of effort when the whole... Like, so I asked you what the benefit was, and it's like, well, it's a laugh. I mean, it, it seems like a lot of effort. So, so when I was sitting there thinking about you coming on, and you're like, you got a great idea. I won't go into every single thing you said, but basically said, I have a big idea. It's great. And I was like, okay, what could this be? Me and Gator were kicking it around because the damn wasn't, wasn't, he was at work. Sounds like he skipped out of work uh, for this, but, uh, I did. <laughs> and we we're like, well, what's he talking about? He just talked to Bannon. Maybe the Trump TV thing, Bannon's going to do it himself. Like we're sitting here thinking that. And then you came in with the Gamergate stuff, and I'm just like, what is that? I mean, this is almost, it almost, it's almost like you're trolling us. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, it, you seem really sincere about it. I don't think you are. I, I'm 100% I'm serious when I say I think we can get not just, I mean, we, like, for example, I wouldn't go straight to Trump. I would probably, you know, try and get Trump Jr. or Stephen Miller or someone well, like can that. I, can I ask you something? I mean, you keep saying we. And, like, and then you say, well, you guys might have the juice to do this. I just oh, like that. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to clearly state to you, I'm not going to use my audience for your retarded plan. Now, maybe Ralph will go along that's with that. Great. Yeah, that's no, that's great. great. It's not going to happen. Great. It's okay. stupid. Okay. And I'm not going to try to get them to, for great. your chuckles, great. your smug chuckles. This is that's, so dumb. That's great. That's great. Awesome. I, I'm glad we're clear. So when you we're, say we're, we... That's, that's great, Jim. I guess you'll just be left behind by history then. Make sure that we is a royal one. It doesn't include... Well, it's, yeah, it's, it is the royal one. I mean, I would never try and include you in something. Good. Happy? I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I guess my point is, it, it seems like... <laughs> Points to Jim. Oh, dear God. All right. We're we're uh, we're supposed to actually be covering the, uh, the Dr. K versus Dr. Mike. So we're going to... We're going to get to that. Ugh. Uh. And I'm going, to run, bleh, I'm going to run to the washroom quickly, and then we're going to get on with that. And that'll be our last segment for tonight. Be right back.
I just say, YouTube taking away the uh, the playlist from the sidebar is the stupidest, the stupidest design decision I can imagine. What is with this weird trend of apps and websites making every single feature more clicks distant to access? Like, why? Why? Who asked for this? What is the purpose? What is the purpose to this? Like, I already had the option to look at my playlists panned out in front of me in a, in a in like a spread. Um, but I also had them on the sidebar and I liked them there and I could minimize them if I wanted to. Why did you take that feature away? What was the point? What does this improve? It's just like, it, it's baffling. How do you draw that distinction? Because DBT is yeah. not... All right, here we go. Dr. Kill versus this weirdo called Dr. Mike, who has 12 million subscribers, apparently. I have no idea who this guy is, but apparently he's a doctor licensed in the U.S., so he's actually a doctor. Um, and uh, he uh, he takes him to task, apparently, so we're going to see how well he does so. We're not going to watch the whole thing. This is like two hours long. Maybe we'll continue it tomorrow. I'm really just interested up to the point where we get to uh, Ayurveda. In fact, you know what? Let's uh, let's jump to here. Mindfulness and enlightenment. Let's go twenty-three to. Let's just jump straight to the Ayurveda part. Be based at that time. You're saying that didn't exist five thousand years ago? No, no, no. So, dude, the East and West are completely different, man. Mm. Like it's like it's like night and day. Okay. So let's let me just give you a couple of examples. So, like if you look at an Ayurvedic textbook, they mm. had a super cool diagnosis for diabetes. Okay. They had they say go pee next to an ant hill. If the ants drink. The, your urine, then you're diabetic, okay. right? So they had a lot of understanding of physiology. What did diabetes mean to them? Um, because to me, it means checking someone's hemoglobin A1C and seeing it fall in a specific range. But if I'm trying to put myself in their shoes, I have no measurements of that. I have no, I, I'm not even aware of bacteria, right? Antibiotics don't exist. Uh, I don't know. I think they have certain herbs that have antimicrobial properties. They understand the process of sterilization. Um, so I think they, they do, have but they don't unless they have a concept of microbes, you idiot. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, we just did a video on the history of the first gentleman who recommended, um, washing hands in between treating morgue patients and delivering babies. In That's the 1800s. In the West. When Dude. was that? that was 1850s. 1850s, yeah. I mean, so so I may have a a, a rose tinted glasses when I look at Eastern medicine. I don't think Eastern because I'm I'm shilling pseudo medicine uh, using that as my branding. Medicine is perfect by any means, but mm -hmm. they absolutely like do like. So it, even if you Dude. look at in Indian culture, this is how well they understood microbiology. So in they didn't they didn't understand microbiology. We didn't, we didn't have a concept of microbes until very, very recently, like a couple hundred years. Indian culture, we eat with our hands, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we also don't have toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So anytime... I we, don't know that, actually. So, <laughs> it, 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 like, if you look at, like, yeah. ancient India, like, okay. uh, not ancient, I'm just, you know, toilet paper is a relatively recent invention. Of course. So how did people in India clean themselves after having a bowel movement? They would wash with their hands. So you... you and then this is how well they understood microbiology... You never eat with your left hand. You That's not understanding microbiology. That's just learning by association. Uh, yeah, people people who eat with hand with which they wipe die early, horrible death. Always eat with your right hand and you always wash with your left hand. That's funny to me because you view that as like them practicing microbiology. I view that as them stereotyping and being rude to people who are left-handed. <laughs> No, I'm just Fair, saying. Yeah, no, I mean, but, 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 but there's a like reason. they were aware of the bacteria, no, 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 but, but they weren't but aware that literally, though. some people preferred to use the other No, hand. they were absolutely okay. aware that there were oh, okay. left-handed people. Okay. What they realized is, I don't care if you're left-handed, there needs to be a convention. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be true. Hang on. Indian stigma against left-handed people. Um... <laughs> Our left-handed people in India are still fighting prejudices and pushing for recognition. Visitors to India are told they must follow one rule. Use only your right hand. The left, they are told, is used for ablutions. 
A euphemism whose archaic sound makes it sound all the more imperative. Hindus, Muslims, and Christians all apparently agree that leading with your left is simply abhorrent. And in parts of India, this is still true. Sandeep Vishnoi, the founder of Indian Left Hander Club, says they still hear stories of children forced to use their right hands only. Quote, We know of a case from Rajasthan where a child was repeatedly punished in school for using his left hand, but he just couldn't write with his right and finally was asked to leave. Unquote. I hate this guy so much. Okay. Where bacteria that come out of your ass should not be put in your mouth. Sure. And that is more important. And bacteria that come out of your ass should also not be consumed by your brain, which is why you should absolutely not subscribe to Dr. K. Than the handedness, because they literally lived in a society where there were endemic diseases like cholera and stuff like that. Mm. So for the sake but, of... But why were they endemic? Why were they endemic, Dr. K? Was it because they had a rich and and uh, 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 a systematic scientific understanding of microbes... Or is it because they didn't? Sanitation. They How the hell is anti-left-handed bigotry still a thing? Uh, I won't venture to guess offhandedly, so to speak. But um, if, uh, if you have a cultural association of wiping fecal matter with one hand, you're going to have a cultural association with don't shake that hand, you know? They would always have you eat with one hand and you never use this hand and this is your washing hand and these are completely separate mm -hmm. so one hand touches the back of the the gi tract and one hand touches the front mm -hmm. so they had an understanding of microbiology in that way i don't know well, if they, was it microbiology that's not microbiology that's not my this guy's so stupid microbiology presumes the existence of micro tiny 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 unobservable biological organisms that are the cause of illness or the cause of health in some cases it's the understanding of an entire domain an entire like ecosystem that is invisible to the naked eye that is responsible for critical features of the environment and of biology if you don't have a concept of the micro you don't have a concept of microbiology what you have is a practice that may incidentally in some cases run in concert by pure coincidence or or just pragmatically as a consequence of this being the actual fact um that that happens in some cases to converge with advice that you would give given a knowledge of microbiology but that doesn't mean that you had a knowledge of microbiology we understood that fire burns skin for the longest time that didn't mean we had a theory of 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 how fire worked that didn't mean we understood what it was there were still people who thought it was a specific substance or did they just see cause and effect? Probably more of cause and effect yeah. than microbiology, because this is where then they why are. why are you saying microbiology? It's because you're trying to elevate it. You're trying to elevate it, Dr. Kill. Also develop something very similar to the theory of humors. You clearly have not read the Vedas. True. This is true. I am an un unread worm. So they yeah. have like these concepts I, of I'm elements. Yeah. Um, but the really interesting thing is that what they basically, I think what they did is notice all kinds of correlations. Yeah and then developed a heuristic system to explain those correlations. Okay, so fear-mongering about left-handed people because they obviously uh, eat and write with their poop hands is, is, a, is, a, is a sophisticated medical system. My question is now, is this a radical form of survivorship? Chemicals can burn skin too. Yeah, but that's because they contain the element of fire. Bias, where we're remembering the ones that turned out to be right and are not pointing out the hundreds of correlations that they deemed as cause and effect. And they were m magic. Wait, so is Dr. K a shill for traditional Eastern medicine? Dr. K is a shill for his own medical practice, which involves Eastern medicine as a part of its novelty. Um, Dr. K is a, Dr. K is a nutball. So I'll give you, so Dr. K is actually a man called Aluk Kenogia. And he's not a medical doctor. He's a psychiatrist. He's a psychiatrist. And he's famous for doing ad hoc therapy sessions with people on stream. Where you are exposing in, in a very unorthodox style of communication, you are exposing the weaknesses and histories 
and and sensitivities of people in an already very odd vocation to an audience that exists that is present to watch them crumble on screen um this guy is a fucking sociopath genuinely and uh this is like this is actually the reason why i, I have a, a profound level of uh almost not hatred but disgust for mr girl and it's not the usual thing where it's like the pedophile stuff it's uh it's also that but um it's because of this let me uh pop this on the screen for you so you can see this and you'll see why it's almost that make myself smaller okay here we go um Starting in late 2019, Kenogia, Dr. K. We're reading right here. Uh, conducted several public interviews with online celebrity Byron Bernstein, also known by the name Reckful, who discussed his issues with depression, bipolar disorder, and his brother's suicide during the live stream. Bernstein stated that his interviews with Kenogia made him feel better and helped him, quote, hear my thoughts affirmed about what is important to my life, unquote. He also stated that Kanojia did not call those interviews therapy for legal reasons. For legal reasons. And as a result, decided that he should also not label them as such. Bernstein used the word therapy in the title of one of his videos with Kanojia, however. In July 2020, Bernstein died by suicide. After Bernstein's death, Kanojia published an hour-long video where he talked about grief, depression, and Bernstein's death. This video would have also been monetized. During the live stream, he advised viewers to see professional mental health counsel if they were feeling symptoms of depression. You know what he didn't do? He didn't advise Reckful to seek professional professional therapy while he was talking to him. In fact, if memory serves, he even said, I don't know, to Reckful during a conversation. I don't know if I'm your therapist or your friend. Um... And as a consequence, this guy didn't seek help, and he died from it. Uh, absolutely disgusting human being. Truly, just, just disgusting. Wrong. And the reason why I'm mad at Mr. Girl is because he made this big piece, this, this definitive Dr. K hit piece, so to speak. And uh, he did this amidst making music videos, uh, calling himself a pedophile. He did this amidst uh, uh, broadcasting the fact, what we're supposed to take as a fact, that he, he raped someone in his words, and so on and so forth. So you gotta, you gotta like, imagine in Dr. K's position, he's like, whew, whew, thank God, thank God this is who people associate with critics of, of what I do. It's, 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 yeah. Like, it could be, could be. So now let's get into that. This is great. Okay, yeah. so let's let's look at that in a couple of different ways. So it's absolutely a possibility of survivorship bias. So let's also remember that there are a lot of things in Ayurvedic medicine that um, are not correct. It was a shitty hit piece too. It was it was shitty, but it, it got traction for what it like at this level it was in. People here are dumb, guys. I don't know what to tell you. Right. So this is where it, and what tends to happen is we don't propagate those. So and then what ends up happening is a survivorship bias where the stuff from Ayurvedic medicine, like, let's say, ashwagandha or Brahmi or meditation. These are the things that we now associate because we remove things like heavy metals in the usage of medicine. Yeah. So there's something called Rasa Shastra in which they'll use things like arsenic, mercury, things like that as treatment. But that is not nearly as popular, but that's absolutely a part of Ayurvedic medicine. So to say that Ayurvedic medicine is right, I think is a gross overgeneralization because there are eight branches of Ayurvedic medicine. Some of them have scientific support. Some of them have scientific evidence that they're actually harmful. Now, there's even a counter argument to that, which is that... Okay, but how are you judging this? Are you judging the harmfulness via Ayurvedic medicine or are you judging it via scientific medicine? Because you're probably doing the latter. Um, in which case, why are you even insisting on Ayurvedic medicine at all? Why not simply do a, do a survey 
and go like, look, here are, uh, here are Ayurvedic practices that have not been interrogated um, that seem to produce, according to quote-unquote clinicians, positive results. So let's look into it and figure out if there's something there that can be repeatable. And if you find it, then boom, good. You found a new uh, form of treatment that is not Ayurvedic. You just were, were uh, you were provoked by Ayurvedic experimentation by, by random chance uh, to pursue that line of inquiry. Um, we, we, like a lot of folk medicines get sort of quote unquote validated that way, but the distinction between folk medicine and scientific medicine is precisely that we understand the mechanism behind it. We have a method by which we interrogate the mechanism that causes a treatment to work. If we don't have that mechanism, then we don't know what's doing what. We don't know if the treatment is doing anything or is making something else worse because we haven't actually tested it in a neutral environment. This is actually bringing me back to the, uh, the SCP-49 video we did the other day. Um, like, like literally, like this, this is an essential part of, of modern versus folk medicine is we use the hospital environment in order to, uh, in order to identify the pathology and the effects of treatment in isolation from the myriad intersecting influences that occur in the wild, so to speak. Be careful not so erudite may call you a racist. Oh yeah, yeah, my introduction to not so erudite was her calling uh, Chud Logic stupid for not understanding quote unquote. What was it? What was the language again? It was, um, do you not know the steps of hypothesis generation? Nobody uses this language with the steps of hypothesis generation. You know how to generate a hypothesis. Um, but that, that language suggests, oh, there's a methodology. And Child Logic was like, I don't know what this means. And she's like, you don't? You don't? Um, Google it. <laughs> you you will not find it. Uh, yeah, she was she was defending that earlier. I, I can't fathom why. Certainly not because of... Uh, Certainly not because she detects a kindred practitioner. They may have known something about the usage of these chemicals that we don't. So a good example. Like what? Hang on. How, how do they know? If they don't understand the chemistry of it, how do they know more? Example of this is if you go back 60 years ago. Okay. And someone shows up and says, hey, you don't need to take an SSRI for your mental illness. You can sit there and meditate. And what would science have said six? Uh, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Here's a, yeah. So there is a study here. The first ever study, this is in 2022, the first ever study to directly compare medication to meditation for anxiety finds the two methods work equally well at reducing symptoms. Now here's what's, here's what's crucial. Um, how did they determine this? The two-month study included 276 patients, good sample size, diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. And that's tricky, because generalized anxiety disorder is not a very specific diagnosis. Half were given a common antidepressant, escitalopram, brand name Lexapro, and the other half participated in a mindfulness-based stress reduction program, which seems to be unspecified. Both groups reported moderate improvements, verbally. A 20% reduction in symptoms at the end of the study, regardless of their treatment. How would you quantify this? How could you conceivably quantify what 20%, a 20% reduction in psychosomatic symptoms is? How do you determine this? You can't. Side effects were more common among those who received the antidepressant. Nearly 80% of the participants experienced at least one side effect, such as trouble sleeping, nausea, headaches, decreased libido, and increased anxiety. Most were considered mild. How would you determine what percentage of effects were decreased. These are based on self-reporting. Like, w like, wouldn't, would not, is it, is it not conceivable? Like, there, there are so many different things that could be intersecting here. 
60 years ago about meditation. Like you can meditation. you can do you can do Absolutely. studies determining basically anything. What matters is not what the studies determine. What matters is the methodology and there are certain kinds of things that a simple survey of this kind is not going to be and this is what it's going to be. It's going to be a survey because how are they do they have do you think they have like a a machine measuring their their stress levels on their bodies that's like duh, 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 duh. no they're, they're 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 filling out a questionnaire and it's like okay so you feel better okay at the time of taking this this uh this this paper uh interrogate sure okay but how do you know you haven't actually crossed that barrier absolutely right and that's what we did say and so they figured something out that based on our modern understanding of biology at the time was literally useless, was so antithetical to everything that there was a revolution in biological science. Yeah, that's not true. The, the, idea of, the idea of behavior, the idea of behavioral interventions is not antithetical to biology. That's, that's stupid. Psychiatry, we're like, this is complete BS. <laughs> Sunday, and, you're just not a psychomagistician. You wouldn't understand. Yeah, fair enough. We were so confident. <laughs> And today it turns out that we're grossly wrong. Actually, you haven't been proven grossly wrong. That's not true. That's not true. There were probably like prejudiced associations between the religious origins of certain types of meditation practices and and uh, associating that with medicine that made people like, okay, uh, are, you, are you sure here? But like, here's a question. Have you actually like, have you identified the component of meditation that is operative here? Have you identified the component of meditation independent of the fact that it's being com uh, conducted in the course of a study? That's operant here. I don't think you can do that. That's very difficult to do. Like, being asked, hey, you've, uh, after, after two weeks of meditation or pills, hey, you feeling better? Well, here's something that might happen. Uh, somebody who's on pills might be stressed out by the side effects. And they might be alarmed by it. And it's possible that maybe... After a period, they would actually, on on recollection, having done pills and meditation afterwards, find that the pills actually overall were better. Or that meditation was better, depending on the person. But you wouldn't, on the basis of them taking one or the other, be able to determine actually which one actually is better for them. You're going to be basing that on self-reports. And people are kind of biased in terms of self-reporting because they only have their own experience to bring to bear. Including, by the way, how they are conditioned culturally, familially, to rank pain. Certain kinds of people, certain people in different family structures, in different social situations, in different jobs, will rank things differently as pain or mere discomfort based upon things that you cannot interrogate. Like, you can't. You can't, you can't get to that. Like, uh... I, I grew up in a in a situation where if you uh, if you displayed uh, if if you were if you were exhausted by tedium or uh, or if you cried when you were hurt or whatever like that was that was being like weak or pathetic or something so therefore pain is something way more in excess of what some other people might consider pain to be yeah. Well, then in that case, I might consider an improvement uh, something much more minor than somebody else who would require something much more major. We know how it affects brainwave states. That's tricky, though. About well, meditation. Yes. Yeah, but side again, effects is often a rise of anxiety first, yeah. And are we just pointing out the one time we were wrong and we were actually right the huge majority of the time? That is what I think makes Western medicine the best. So He drops that too quickly. What makes Western medicine the best is we are the best at pointing out when we're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it. that's a scientific method, is it not? Sure. That's so why I, we, I think that people I think, were mad during COVID that uh, guidelines changed. Even and, autistic people have often a different perspective of pain. Oh, well, I doubt they. I doubt they controlled for that. It's like, well, because we we're pointing out when yeah. we were wrong. So, 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 yeah, that's the scientific method. So, I think this is the weakness. I was, um, I, I helped to organize a conference at Harvard a couple of years ago, and uh, one of my mentors was on on the panel, and so this is a, a, a conference on integrating. Mm. Prime example: heroin used to be administered liberally. Patients were quite positive in their responses to it. Still, it was bad. Yeah. Into medicine. Mm. So there were a bunch of like Eastern medical practitioners there and they kind of asked this question. They said like, what do you think needs to happen for Eastern medicine to be 
more widely accepted. Mm -hmm. And my mentor, brilliant guy named John Denger said, you guys need to let your treatments fail. Mm -hmm. The problem is there's such a pissing contest between Western medicine and Eastern medical practitioners that no one on the East is willing to say, yeah, this treatment sucks. Okay, well, that's kind of a problem then, Dr. K, because that casts suspicion on literally every element of quote unquote Eastern medicine, all of it. If they're afraid to say this treatment sucks, then you can't trust their findings because they're obscuring them. So the the way, the one thing that we do really, really well, which is I think why allopathic medicine, the, the, talking about selection biases, but let's talk about, not uh, selection biases in a, in a uh, the reason that Western medicine is dominated so much is because we are so good at pointing out when our medicine is wrong. Mm -hmm. So if you look at things like thalidomide mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, like that's such a great example of, oh my God, revolutionary medicine yep. solves nausea. And yep. by the way, we're never gonna use it ever <laughs> exactly. again, right? And so we're really good at that. And the biggest problem in Eastern medicine is they are so hung up on getting widespread acceptance. There's this ego battle going on between Eastern medical practitioners and Western medical practitioners that Eastern medical practitioners are not willing to say, oh, hey, by the way, this treatment actually sucks. Is that because- That's not an ego battle, that's business. If your treatment sucks, you don't have a practice. A lot of those treatments are less based on the scientific method and are more culturally based? So I think they're based on the scientific method, but they don't look at the mechanism in the same way that way. That then they're not based on the scientific method because the way they look at the mechanism is based on the understood structure and dynamics of bodily functions as determined by experiment and and um and dissection like that we do so if we look at scientific method what is scientific method it is observe having a hypothesis testing that hypothesis observing results so i think they did that but not just doing that from scratch every single time it's relying upon previous findings right like you can you can use oh well technically like we tested this thing da, 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 because we gave this person this treatment and uh, we hypothesized that it would work and lo and behold they sent us back a letter saying my back's feeling great like that's that's tech technically you can frame that as a hypothesis and, and a positive result but that's not the same thing like you're 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 skirting having to engage with the corpus of previous experiment that's not how meditation was developed which is a, a whole different conversation about sources of transcendental knowledge Does little mice look at used for cancer i have no idea um i have no idea all this good stuff mm -hmm. But they absolutely applied the scientific method. So I, I, I don't think that you can develop as robust of a system of medicine. The big difference though, is that we're really good at instrumentation. So in the West are a big, it's not even technically a part of the scientific method. You can just, you know, a child can make observations, test hypotheses and come up with conclusions. I mean, every time a child's learning to walk, that's what they're absolutely, doing. Absolutely, yeah. right? But they don't use a microscope. They don't understand anything about anatomy. So one of the things that I think we've actually mistaken is that in the East, they use the scientific method quite robustly. They just don't use instrumentation. Mm -hmm. So what they did is figured out all of these correlations and causations and developed these kind of heuristic systems. Even something like the concept of an organ is actually an abstract concept. Right? It's not, you can make an argument that there's no such thing as an organ, there's just, everything is just cells. You can just say. Oh my God. Yeah, like, subspicie aeternitatis, there isn't a sharp distinction between one piece of tissue and another. There isn't a firm metaphysical distinction where one organ ends and another begins. But that doesn't mean, like, it, it's okay to just be like, well, you know, functions really in the eye of the beholder anyways. That's not how that works. Say that about anything, about a cell. Yeah. This is hotep stuff, but for Indians. I don't know. Like, God, this is embarrassing. You, right? That's like, um, I think like Deepak Chopra's main thing is, like, what is HIV? That's a concept that you've created in your mind. It's like, well, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm not I think quite it's very there. easy to go. So, so I think they applied the scientific method, but what they didn't have was good instrumentation to elucidate the mechanisms, right? So they, they mm -hmm. didn't have microscopes. They didn't have, but they were still able to make observations. 
that when you have a diabetic, they're going to have sugar in the urine. And if you have sugar in the urine, you can test for that by if ants drink your urine. Right. I think a lot of their scientific method approach is more so finding correlations and things that happen, which can be a form of scientific method and an introductory form of scientific method. Yeah, swap your liver with a lung, see how that goes. Well, they're all just cells, right? There's no actual organs. Method. But then in order to see if your correlation is valuable, can you affect it? Can you uh, reproduce it? Can you generalize it? That is always missing. In Eastern medicine? Yeah. I disagree. Really? So yeah. tell me more yeah. about so, that. Yeah, like, so I mean, that's how they came up with these things like ashwagandha and Brahmi and some of these things that we use in psychiatry, turmeric. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, the usage of bitter herbs in the treatment of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So what they did is, I, I think, right? So I wasn't there. You just have these texts where they'll say, okay, if you've got someone who's a diabetic, they need to eat bitter melon. Mm -hmm. So I think what they discovered is, is that when you feed someone a, someone a food that has an impact on their insulin. So do they have a concept of diabetes? Hang on. Johann Peter Frank is credited with distinguishing diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus in 1794. Physicians of the medieval Islamic world, including Avicenna, have also written on diabetes. Um, so the earliest account is 1550 BC. Interesting. Oh, well, that's very interesting, actually. So Ayur Ayurvedic actually were ahead of the game here. Patient known as diabetes is referring to diabetes mellitus. It's thought to have been described in the Ebers Papyrus. Thought to have been described in the Ebers Papyrus. 1550 BC, Ayurvedic physicians, 5th and 6th century BC, first noted the sweet taste of diabetic urine and called the condition madhumeha, honey urine. The term diabetes traces back to Demetrius of Epic. Okay, but that's just the identification of symptoms. That's just, that's just the association of symptoms with a pathology. That's not scientific. That's just flat out saying like, look, some people whose urine tastes sweet because we're drinking that shit apparently um they uh yeah the, the, they they get sick and die early but that's that's not understanding diabetes that's like saying you understand cancer or liver failure because you recognize man who drinks too much dies with yellow skin in metabolism has an impact on their blood sugar once this person eats bitter melon twice a day or drinks the juice of a bitter melon on a daily basis the amount of sugar in the urine that the ants get attracted to goes down yeah but does that improve their physical symptoms does that like improve their their, their like their their ail ail ailment like Like, like may maybe it alters your blood sugar levels, but, like, that doesn't mean... Okay, so let's see here. So, according to WebMD, some studies show... Uh... Some study, uh, bitter melon has several chemicals that seem to act like insulin and help to lower blood sugar levels, okay? Some studies suggest that they do this by causing more glucose to enter the cells and then helping your body process it and store it in the liver, muscles, and fat. They also may prevent your body from changing the nutrients that it stores into glucose and then releasing it into the blood. Some studies show bitter melon can lower blood sugar and A1C levels in people with type 2 diabetes, but other studies have been far less promising, so research goes on. Okay, so if you, uh, if you have like an endemic illness and you're just trying everything and you find some people have a positive result or a diminution of symptoms based upon consuming this type of food. Okay. If that's the best you got, go with it. But what if people are pursuing this stuff in lieu of more recognized medications that actually would work? In lieu of, say, for example, actually getting access to insulin. That's a problem. What if, uh, what if access to these treatments is then being used as a justification 
for um, for not putting in place the infrastructure or the the funding to get people access to the real treatments to insulin. Well, that's also a problem. Having sugar in your urine doesn't always mean diabetes, though. That's also true. Like you can't, ex yeah. Don't even now, the effect is misunderstood. Yeah, even like, and there are studies that say it's not promising. So, like, and taste urine to detect the sugar content using their tongue, mm -hmm. um, and then I think they see that this leads to better outcomes over time. So I would not call that a correlation. I think at some point in the system of medicine, what you always have is an intervention, and then you measure that outcome in some way. Mm -hmm. I guess to me, unless you randomize it and control for biases, it's not that. That's method. a huge problem. Yeah. But in, in the opposite way. So here's the key, key thing. So when you r randomize, so we view the RCT as the hallmark, right? Mm -hmm. There's a huge problem with the RCT. So let's say I show you an RCT that says that cholesterol, uh, let's say like cholesterol lowering medication. Mm -hmm. What is the outcome for an individual patient when you prospectively give them a cholesterol med? You're talking about number needed to treat. No, I'm not talking, oh, you're sure, but... <laughs> So, so if I come to you that, today, ninety nine percent of the time for the individual, it's not going to have an impact. But for so, the general population, you will see. So this is really important to yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. So our system of medicine does not make predictions about individuals; mm -hmm. it makes predictions about populations. Mm -hmm. So Ayurvedic system of medicine is completely different because they don't care about populations; they care about individuals. Yeah, but that's a problem, though. That's a problem because you identify the behaviors of pathologies by reference to how they present across patients. Like, otherwise, like, what is, what is the basis for having a uniform standard of treatment for a condition? Right? Is, is, is it, it going to be like the, the, the correlations between um, effectiveness at the level of the population, at the level of the individual? Well, ideally, like in the course of giving like a specific patient like adju and adjusting their treatment, it's going to be both. But you're going to be starting from the basis of these signs present and therefore we use what has worked across populations as the standard. Mm -hmm. So their whole system. So if you think about randomized controlled trials, what we're literally doing. Exactly. You should set up random tests of piss drinking every day. I mean, arguably, that's what I do as a job these days. In that trial is removing the individuality. Mm hmm. Yeah, Tom. unless we forget, and I'll end on this. Uh, Dr. K is not a doctor. He's a psychiatrist. He has no clue what he's talking about. Legitimately, no clue. Um, this is a guy who claims that depression doesn't exist. Like, he, he's he's a quack. He's a quack. He, he may very well have gotten somebody killed. Um... He's, he's giving people a deeply contorted understanding of how therapy works. Uh, he's offering therapy or pretending to not offer therapy when that's the understanding uh, to people online and thereby dissuading them from spending the money and time to actually get therapy when they need it. And as a consequence, people have died. And he doesn't care. It's, this guy doesn't care. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's the mega church pastor of the... 21st century. This is this is this is how these creeps work. The individual, it's not going to have an impact. But for so, the general population, you will see psychiatrists are doctors. Uh, different kind of doctor. So this is really important to mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. So our system of medicine does not make predictions about individuals. You're confusing psychiatrists with psychologists, Sunday. No, what I'm saying is that a psychiatrist is not going to be trained, for example, um, they require medical knowledge, but they are not going to be, for example, dietitians or surgeons or whatever. Um, they have a very specific level of training that has to do with mental illnesses in particular, but the understanding of mental illness and so on and so forth is going to be downstream from a whole bunch of stuff that is not influenced by specifically medical research. It's going to be influenced by by things in, in psychology and, and stuff of that sort. 
Um, which is why he's able to intrude uh, upon his discipline with ideas like the, the just out-of-hand disavowal of the existence of pathologies. Whereas if a medical doctor simply flat out told you, like, I don't think diabetes even exists, or if they just claimed it doesn't even exist, like, they'd be, they'd be laughed at. He will claim that cancer can be cured by placebo um, in the course of justifying uh, specifically Eastern practice. It makes predictions about populations. Mm -hmm. So Ayurvedic system of medicine is completely different because they don't care about populations, they care about individuals. Mm -hmm. So their whole system, so if you think about randomized controlled trials, what we're literally doing in like that- Like they'll have medical terminology, they'll probably have basic pharmacology, but they're not going to be, like just because somebody, okay, just because somebody is called an MD does not mean that they have been trained in medicine holistically. That's not what that means. There are still areas of special specialization. Like, has this guy ever worked in a hospital? Has he ever has he ever worked like at, at the level of like actually administering like chemical treatments to a patient for an extended period of time? I thought a psychiatrist can prescribe medicines, whereas a psychologist cannot. Well, because a psychologist is somebody who works in the field of studying psychology. Or as a psychiatrist can prescribe medicines, but Sunday, did you hear about the Lebanese politician that was assassinated? No. Like you have to be really careful here, because MD, like PhD, sort of like um, what? No, I'm not. I'm not confusing this, Pippa. In UK, psychiatrists are trained in medicine. What do you mean? Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> this is what you require in the UK to become a psychiatrist. Ready for this? To become a psychiatrist in the UK, you will need a degree in medicine recognized by General Medical Council, a two-year foundation program of general training, three years core training in psychiatry, specialist training, which should take up to three years. So basically, for their first two years, there's going to be very, very basic medical training. Like, very basic. They're not going to be dietitians. They're not going to be et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So him having an MD does not mean that he is not grossly out of his lane to start making... Uh, like prescriptions about things like cancer. There, that's a specific department. Just having an MD, it's it's like um, ah. Uh. Anyways, trial is removing the individuality mm -hmm. from our system of medicine, yep. which then creates a problem of external validity. So the basic problem of our studies is that we can do a study on 10,000 people, but you know this is a clinician. This is why we need clinicians, because your human brain needs to take all of this data and then translate it to apply it to an individual. Mm -hmm. So in the Ayurvedic system of medicine, they think that randomized controlled trials are the antithesis of practicing medicine. Okay, look, Pippa, six years of studying to be a doctor. Uh, that does not mean six years of studying to be, okay. So if we look, for example, okay. Let's go back to his uh, Wikipedia here. Go to his education. Kanojia became addicted to video games during his time at the University of Texas at Austin, leading to missed classes and bad grades. Good start. At the age of 21 in 2003, he visited an ashram in India looking to become a monk at the advice of his father. He spent a month at the ashram where his teachers advised him to finish his degree rather than join the monastery. He would return every summer until 2010. Um, in India, he studied yoga and meditation, which he said gave him self-awareness and self-control required to control his addiction and salvage his career. 
He graduated in 2007 with a biology major and began a placement at Tufts University School of Medicine in 2010. He received his medical degree in 2014. So right off the bat, you're wrong when you say he got it in six years. And subsequently started a residency at Harvard Medical School's Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, McLean Adult Psychiatry Residency Program. So he would have gotten like like very, very basic, very general medical training. He would not He would not be entitled, therefore, to speak on cancer or speak on diabetes or things of that sort. This isn't his domain, right? Yeah, MD, exactly. MD is the base level of training. The specialization can be worlds apart in as many more years. You do not become a medical doctor with a specialization in four years or in six years. Can I explain why I heavily disagree? Yeah. Well, I agree with, first of all, the notion of why we need clinicians, of taking generalized concepts and individualizing it to the person in front of us a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what my residents get wrong the majority of the time. I just did a video on this because the idea of number needed to treat, just why I brought that up, is because it's a topic where, for example, lowering blood pressure, we see population-based controlling it to a certain number will prevent 30% of heart attacks and strokes. But for the person sitting in front of you, 98, 99% of the time, it's not gonna do anything. So the question of why I still, uh, or the reason why I think randomized controlled methods are still the best for the individual is because we're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. What does that mean? We're throwing away randomized controlled studies because they're imperfect to the individual. I think we need to look at it deeper and say, right now, this is the best knowledge we have for the general public, which will ultimately be the best for you because this is the best information we have. In the future, as algorithms as information gets better, I think we can better individualize randomized controlled studies so that we can run simultaneously thousands, millions of experiments to know instead of 80 patients I need to give this blood pressure medicine to prevent the heart attack, only 10. So now I'm targeting the therapy more towards the individual and less towards the general public. But, but so then ideally what you would want is not even a randomized controlled trial, you would want trials on an individual. Right, because that's when you pr produce perfect correlation between your scientific methods. Absolutely methodology. not. D explain that to me. Too much bias when you're treating a single person. But isn't that what you're looking for? Is you want you want a uh, an amount of bias that is specific to the person. So let me give you an example. I think so, bias works both ways. So uh, let me ask you. A question. This guy is way too fucking kind. I honestly think Mike was being reckless platforming this fucking idiot. No, he's being opportunistic. See this here. Super important convo. Thanks for having us on. That's Dr. K here, Healthy Gamer GG. He's uh, he's doing what Destiny does. This is a business. Uh, this guy benefits from the connection with Dr. K. They'll never take each other down in a serious way. Question. Yeah. So let's say, like, so we now have some of these services in psychiatry. And Rick's, I thank you for the five good memberships. Psychiatry, where we, you can do genetic testing on a person. Correct. No present Sunday. I'm talking about the UK. You looked it up. Takes six years plus three years specialized to become a psychiatrist. But he didn't, he didn't go to school for six years before taking three extra years to become a psychiatrist, Pippa. So you're wrong. He, he studied for four years. It says right here. Uh, he began his placement um, after he had a biology major, so his undergraduate. And then he began a placement at Tufts University of Medicine in 2010. And then he got his medical degree in 2014. That's four years. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, do we even have his, uh, his specific MD? Let's see. So if I go to his website. So Harvard Medical, Medical School instructor in psychology, psychiatry. Um, that would have been, hang on. So that would have been, I 
I don't know when that would have been. Um, doesn't seem to mention anything else. Researcher for the Center for Complementary and Integrative Medicine. Bihar School of Yoga. The Tufts thing isn't even mentioned here, is it? To see this, which medication is yeah. going to have the best. So do you think that those kinds of, these, these are not recommended by the American Psychiatric Correct. Association? Yeah, I just had a patient bring this in last week. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't use them usually in clinical practice because the data does not show that using these services in randomized yes. controlled trials is, is a fact, which is hilarious. <laughs> okay. Right? So I'm with you there. But yeah. let's say like theoretically, you know, if we could get to a point where that did work yeah. and we can recognize that, okay, this person has this kind of serotonin transporter gene and this kind of medication is effective. Do you think that is that the kind of goal of personalized medicine is to create a, a system of understanding this person as an individual, not worrying about the population? It's what are your polymorphisms so we can figure out the perfect medicine for you? Yes, but the only way we can get there is with randomized controlled trials. How so? In order for us to know that this works on this person. Oh, we have I to need say, to... Yeah, yeah, a randomized control trial that this is effective for lots of people. Yeah, so the methodology is yeah. personalized. Yeah. And then we, we are doing a randomized control trial on personalized methodologies Correct. to see that personalized. That I'm with you 100%. Okay. So when I look at the Ayurvedic system, I think they're closer to that personalized methodology. Don't you feel like there's so much bias in that approach though? When they try, like for example, I had uh, Dr. Gundry on my podcast who makes a lot of claims that disagree with uh, a lot of the big institutions, the American Academy of Family Physicians, United States Preventive Task Force, the American College of Cardiology, et cetera. And when someone presents information that disagrees with large bodies of evidence or large bodies of medical groups, you need to show me amazing evidence to show why you know, but the rest of the people don't. Like, you need to show me corruption on their side. You need to show me why you believe what you believe, what evidence you're looking at, et cetera. But when you're treating one person, to make your treatment successful doesn't require a lot of evidence. Uh, how are you, uh, I mean, what, how are you, uh, what is, how are you defining evidence? That which you can give to a third party and say, look, uh, this is how I know that my treatment specifically is doing the thing I think it is to my patient. That's, that's it. And then they would verify, well, is this actually valid evidence? Well, let's see if we can repeat it. And then if you can't, you go, well, hang on. Are we sure then that this is actually doing what you think it's doing? Or is there maybe something else at play here? Something particular to the patient? Or something else that the treatment is doing in this particular context that isn't replicable elsewhere? Or is it even doing anything? Have we separated this from the natural course of the illness in this patient? In the statement that I made, uh, evidence that I need to know that they're telling the truth is randomized controlled data. So how can you have randomized controlled data on an individual? You can't. You, you can't. The data is, is controlled between patients. That's why you that's why you need the whole medical apparatus to get actual like robust knowledge of this kind of stuff. My god, I'm raging. He wants to rediscover medicine starting from scratch for each individual patient. I mean, that works in his favor by scaling it. But then it's not on an individual, then it's on a population. It's individual population medicine. Because that's what an algorithm oh, would oh, so, do. So you're you're talking about doing an RCT on individualized medicine versus population-based medicine. Correct. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think I don't think we're disagreeing here. But what I'm kind of pointing out is, so let's talk about clinical practice, right? Mm -hmm. So when you know what works for this person, you have an, a pile of RCTs, but then you, as a clinician, individualize your treatment. Of course. Yeah, but Do the bare fact of individualizing your treatment based upon a patient's responsivity to treatments that you've already given is not by itself a byway of justifying oh, well, we'll just use leeches because, you know, who knows? Maybe this individual will react differently. Deviate for protocols to get the best 
clinical outcome. Correct. And this is a practice. It's an art. Two doctors may recommend two different treatments and both be yeah. acceptable. So, so in this situation, how would you describe what you're doing? Would you call this individual practice of medicine? Would you call this the art of medicine? Okay, so I think Ayurveda leans more into that. So Got Ayurveda it. basically says, okay, if we look at individuals, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as an ind. Twice he's not a doctor. He's a psych psychiatrist. Are doctors, Pippa? They're MDs. In the UK, psychiatrists have more training than doctors. Yeah, but they aren't special. They aren't specialists in cancer or diabetes or or like autoimmune disorders or whatever like that that's the point but he's speaking to those he's speaking to those and he's trying to justify using quack medicine because well um like you know sometimes individuals are responsive to it and we'll never know if we go at the group level it's like yeah sure but you don't even know what you're doing then dependent disease process that exists outside of an individual i mean we're watching two leeches right now possibly that every mm -hmm. disease process gets personalized when you stick it in a person. And so their approach, so I personally think that if we wanna see proper outcomes from Ayurveda, we can never do an RCT. Because their whole system of medicine is that depression in me and depression in you is different. Which by the way, it's really fascinating that we're moving in that direction. I'll, I'll get to that in a yeah. second. But what I think we really need to see for Eastern medicine, the right kind of study is actually a cohort study. So what we really need to do is take a cohort of people, give them Eastern medicine, cohort of people, give them allopathic medicine, and see who has better outcomes. Well, that's not a cohort. What do you mean? In a situation where you'd randomize people and you'd say some of your, oh, you mean it's a, you wanna do a comparison cohort as yeah, opposed yeah, yeah. to give someone true Ayurvedic treatment versus a sham. No, no, yeah, I'm talking about cohort studies. Got so a okay. so, uh, non-inferiority trial Got between okay. al traditional allopathic treatment and Ayurvedic treatment. Because the whole point yeah. is that when we, their system of diagnosis presumes mm -hmm. that there is not a treatment for depression. And then what we do is we take that thing, we remove all the individuality, which is a core part of their system of medicine. Mm -hmm. So their whole system of medicine is that, so there's even like, so for example, they believe that, you know, the man, I'm, extrapolating here based on my expertise okay let's let's, let's look at his expertise okay kill cancer cells they get, which is drugs 100 people with cancer and they give them chemotherapy which is drugs that travel in your body to cancer and kill cancer cells they give other 50 people not this isn't precisely true but they give other people placebo so placebo is not a real thing it's like a sugar pill and the interesting thing is that in these clinical trials, people who get, so what, what they, when they determine the efficacy of the drug, well, the way they determine it is how much did it outperform placebo. That's the standard. It's not how much did it work, it's how much did it outperform placebo. Which means that if you look at a clinical trial in cancer, mm -hmm. what's actually happening is there are people who are getting better, their cancer is shrinking, on like MRIs, but they're not taking real medicine. And he's using this as a justification, as an argument for, hey, this mind stuff we're doing in Ayurveda, it cures cancer. Let's see if his, uh, I think he has the depression, uh, the depression statement here as well. An example of a randomized controlled trial is I take 10,000 people, and let's say I'm trying to figure out depression. Then what I do is I split them into two groups, a control group and an intervention group, and I give 5,000 people an antidepressant, and I give 5,000 people a sugar pill. Then what I do, the reason we called it controlled is because we try to make the two groups the same. We try to have them have the same socioeconomic status, the go. same average age, the same gender breakdown. So we try to remove a lot, even if they know it's a placebo. Yeah. I'm not like surprised. That blows my fucking mind. <laughs> right? So what, now I'm getting off on a tangent because like, what is placebo? Placebo is just all of the mechanisms of the human body and mind that we yep. do not scientifically understand. Exactly. But placebo actually gets people better. Mm -hmm. In cancer clinical trials, in rheumatoid arthritis clinical trials, depression clinical trials, but that's like waffly because depression is in the mind and it's not really real anyway. 
but you can look at physical illness. This guy's this guy's a this guy's a clown. This guy's an absolute clown. Like he'll take, for example, oh, and I, I haven't verified this, but we'll just go with it on faith. Um, oh, on placebo, Charlie found out that some people with placebo uh, that, that were given a placebo treat, a placebo drug or whatever, um, they had more positive outcomes than some people without it, even if they knew it was a placebo. A placebo. Okay, therefore, curing cancer is about a state of mind. Depression is not real because it's in the like. Think about the mindset, for example. Depression is not real. It's something in the mind. Therefore, it's not real. As a psychiatrist, he's 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 ridiculous. Stupid, stupid man. I want you to know how stupid you have to be to not know you aren't getting chemo. Uh, well, if your if your chemo is treating you really well, if you're oh, I'm a. Uh, there was a good Archer episode about this actually. Oh, chemo's uh, yeah, I I had I got lucky with chemo. It was so easy. Well, I got some bad news for you. You're probably not on chemo. Chemo fucks you up. Exactly. Placebo doesn't make your hair fall out. Cancer is caused by anger. There is no cure. It's caused by the seven deadly sins. All right, editor, you got some slurs to edit out from this uh this one. I need to run because uh, people here want to eat. So I'm going to send you to Demon Mama. Apparently it's time to say goodbye. Tell her Sunday sent you a Rivadurchi. 